new home for podcasts and original music. The Sagniff One Radio Network. Nick Saban does not play anybody less than his. He doesn't put anybody less on the field than his very best players. Bama does what Bama do. Um, I heard a noise. My bad. Somebody just left it on. <laughs> left it on my step, uh, that Colorado defense is definitely underrated, but he, they ended up pulling it out late. Uh, they have one of the players to watch for, uh, Isaiah Spiller. Oh, it, it's better. It's better now. Trust me. Like back in the day, there was at least one murder. <laughs> so, I mean, it's better now. Realize that you're not doing anything to press your case by getting me to go down there. No, nah, man, come on down there. It was only one you know? murder. Yeah, they're only averaging one murder a year. And shout out to Florida. They're playing them this Saturday. Number 11 ranked Florida playing number one Alabama. So I think that's going to be a high scoring game. And wow. Well played, Colin. Well played. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> you, get, you, get, you get a double finger point, one for me and one for Sean. You need to get deep. Here we go, get your popcorn ready. Hello, 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 ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a marvelous Christmas. Hope everybody is uh, prepared for the coming of 2022 well you better be prepared because mm-hmm. if you ain't it's coming anyway so we hope you got your stuff together got your house clean got your uh your uh, hopping johns and your pig feet and your hog malls and your chitlins <laughs> and your collard greens and your cornbread and your beans greens potatoes tomatoes etc cetera, etc cetera. um welcome to this week's edition of this week in sec football season one episode 19 i am mr fingers coming to you from zagnip central that fella right there to my right and your left, <laughs> as you're looking at him on the screen, or actually he would be on your right also. The brother from another, Colin P, and this gentleman down here. We had to bring him in. This we had to bring him in today uh, as, as a show of support because the brother had a rough day today. He had to. He had to. He had to uh, be tried by. Uh, he had to be tried by a hostile jury today. Uh, oh, yeah. But the man came. But the man came through. Uh, he did endure because the race. Today was definitely not given to the Swift. Go to town for the straw. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the Dallas Cowboys fans, I will Ooh. fear no evil. That was a big old shadow. That was a whole lot of evil, bruh. <laughs> oh. Bruh. They roasted, they roasted you worse than Jamie Foxx tore up Doug Williams, man. Mm. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I was, <laughs> so, the, Co- Co- Colin and I were messaging each other like, bruh. Colin was like, bro, it's a beatdown. I was like, bro, man. It's worse than that first round. It's worse than Buster Douglas on Mike Tyson right now. <laughs> like it was, I broke my back. With like they're supposed to yeah. post. <laughs> yeah. What happened? What happened out there, Sean? I broke my back. Well, you broke your back. What kind of injury was spinal? I broke my back. <laughs> That's all he can you say. You handled like a champ, though. You handled it like a champ. I gotta say that. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. But yep, we're still here. Hey, look, we're, we're still hey, here. And Sean also showed us the power of the kick button. Boy, just, click, 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 click. <laughs> Yeah. All right, time to go. Time to go. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. Let's go. <laughs> we knew you needed to see some familiar and friendly faces, so that's why we got you on me. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate Yeah, you. man. Would you come on over here? Like, you know how you, look, just like this, like back in the day when the, when you folks used to let you fight on the street, then when the fight was over, they, big mom, come on in the house, baby. I'm going to make you a cheese, a grilled cheese sandwich. It's the Kool-Aid. Right, it's going right. to be all right. I'm going to put some thigh later. Put some hold your elbow up like this. Hold it up. That way it won't sting oh so God. bad. We put it right in the window. Did you say my thigh lane? I ain't heard that. I shit. did. Oh my God. <laughs> that that red, that red stuff that burned like the devil's fire. Oh, man. Boy, that brought me back. Goodness mm-hmm. <laughs> Bassetracing had no, I thought Bassetracin was bad till I got that methylate. Ooh, we I'm a lot of yeah. That was worse than a knee scrape. I was like, I I'd, I'd, I'd rather just go scrape my knee again. I don't even want. Now that devil is a lie. I don't even know. Is that fire? Is that I ain't even smelled that girl? I ain't even tasted real fire before. Anyway, 
Uh, last show for 2021. We want to take this opportunity right now. We'll get you again at the end of the show. But we do want to thank those of you that have been tuning in, watching, sharing, telling people to come and check us out. As always, this episode is sponsored by DJG Enterprises and GreekGans.com. They have all of your custom team needs. If you need them, go get them. They got you. They can get you these custom-made engraved insulated tumblers. They can also make you those beautiful uh, custom Afghans that you see there. Visit www.greekgans.com today for all your custom sports gear needs. Thank you so much for being one of our very first sponsors and for sponsoring this craziness every single week. Gentlemen, oh, yeah. he hell of a hell of a week. It's been kind of crazy. The transfer portal noise has kind of quieted down a little bit, except for Bo Nix making the big enough. Look, Bo Nix said, I'm going to Oregon, and everybody went, and okay, right. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like it's like wait, wait, tell us something we didn't already know. Like what what what, what you want us to do? We're supposed to throw you a party, but uh right. There was a little bit of confusion there because Bo uh, uh, Tank Bigsby said he was going in the portal, and then Bo Nick said he was going in the portal, and then Bo Nick, and then uh, Bigsby said, "Oh, he leaving? That mean I might can run the ball some more. I think I'm gonna stay." So, uh, Bo, Bo Nick's going to Oregon. Um, I'm not exactly sure what to think about that. My two cents. Um, you got uh, what's the kid's name? This the backup quarterback right now that's been backing up Brown. And Sean, I think you and I talked about this. Um, uh, the kid, the kid that was backing up the starting quarterback at Oregon, and he's, mm. he's supposedly a four star. He's supposedly a real stud, but now you got this guy coming in. It's gonna potentially take the starting job from him. It could create a domino effect at Oregon, and they already yeah. in a little bit of instability because they got the new coach, uh, our defensive coordinator Dan Lanning, um, head out that way after the CFP and the championship, you know, national championships all done. But what do you guys think about that though? Uh, I'll, 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 you know what, uh, Sean, I'll let you start first. I think I'm gonna let you start all the discussions first today. Just so you can <laughs> so you let can it all out. It. It's like that Chris, Do like that Chris Doucher wow. song. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to talk. I wasn't able to talk on uh, Let's Talk Football today. That's uh, the first episode I've ever seen. 20 minutes solid. You got out like eight words. That was it. That's very true. Yeah. Anyway. Nothing to say. I'm sorry. To say. I'm sorry. We, <laughs> bro, we, you know, Colin, I just realized we pulled an open a wound that's still festering. We're going to be that long. Go ahead, brother. I'm numb. So it's all good, guys. I'm numb. I'm already uh, numb. Look, okay? I'm gonna tell you the like way you feel about Atlanta is the way I feel about these guys. It's just numb. Look, it's just I just numb. I'm gonna tell you like Olivia Benson. This is a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play though? Come here to heal. <laughs> you can heal here. Um, yo, yeah, Anthony Brown's leaving um, after this year, um, and he, he balled out. The other guys behind him are two freshmen. Um, so they they haven't got as much action in there, but they have gotten some time and some garbage time. So it'd be e eager to see if you know you know Bo Nix is obviously a little a little higher in his uh, year, but I don't know. These guys know the system. I, I wonder if there's going to be a competition or if they just give it to Bo Nix. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. Um, one of the things we talked about. He let me let me check what your die is. They're running back. Yeah, their running back, Travis Dye, is a junior. He has been their leader this year with over 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns. He has been definitely contributing major to the running game. Verdell was another one of their running backs, but he got hurt. He's also a junior. If they both come back, Bo Nix having that two-headed monster, hopefully what that will do is make it so Bo Nix doesn't have to run so much. We always talk about him and Tank Bixby, how it was like I had to do it. He had to run. Hopefully, yeah. with the fact that you're playing Pac-12, which, as we all know, is kind of down right now, they're not the defense. That's not an SEC defense in the Pac-12. So, hopefully, with that, he won't have to run. He can maybe focus more on passing. And who knows? We'll see what he, see what happens. Maybe it'll be a situation like Jacob Eason, where he went out there and it was kind of like, eh, you know, nothing. He doesn't really improve, but he didn't. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't a superstar. And I mean, the, the team around him. I think a lot depends with that offense. If um, those two running backs come back, Verdell and Die, if they come back, they will take a lot of the pressure off of him. And then I think that's going to be huge, taking pressure off him, 
and letting him just kind of manage the game and letting him be great, but not forcing him to have to be great. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah I, I, can... I don't know. Go ahead, Colin. I'm sorry. No, no, I was, I was going to agree with Sean. I was like, you know, if, if I think it all depends on his offensive line, you know, like if, if he gets yep. the protection that he actually he needs and doesn't feel the need to run the ball as much as he had, you know, has had to uh, over the past, um, you know, years. And um, but that that's yeah, I mean, that that would be the kicker for me if the offensive line, you know, to give him protection and it, will he be able to sit back and make his reads and, you know, and produce you know good throws and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I I don't know what Bo Nix is talking about him having to run. I mean, when you got a certified stud in in Bigsby, who should have had a thousand yard season well before the twelfth game of the year, when you got a quarterback that just takes off running just to take off running. I mean, he might have a little Forrest Gump in him, you know. I don't. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I don't. I, he didn't. He didn't have to run. He just. I I, I think it speaks to his. Maturity as a quarterback, I don't think he has matured enough as a quarterback. Um, hopefully, Lanning can kind of reel him in, or at least he's got some, you know, he's got some uh, coordinators there that can reel him in and and have him calm down and stop having happy feet in the having happy feet in a clean pocket. I get maybe you get a little nervous when you see your pockets collapsing right off the break mm -hmm. from the snap, but I mean he's got happy feet in a clean pocket. You know, go to go to his go to his first read. That guy's not open. Uh 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 uh, uh and then he just you know he's gone. Well, that's another so, conversation, that, Anthony. What you brought up is, I mean, is it going to be a lot of work for him to uh, kind of uh, adjust to that having the pocket? You know, having that kind of time. I mean, and like not have happy feet, like you just said. You know what I mean? So yeah. And that you know what that actually might be the issue because how you know how great was his line in Auburn? You know, maybe he might end up getting an upgrade in in uh, Oregon with a lot of these guys that have played together. And he might come into a situation where, you know, a lot of these, you know, what's the thing we always say in the NFL? They're a quarterback away. You mm -hmm. know, Brown was solid. And, and Bo Nix kind of has the same characteristics where he can throw, but he does have a quick, a quick one read go mentality. That worked in that offense a year ago for Oregon. So it might be a good fit. I mean, the other part of this whole thing is fit, if they fit. And I think the fact that you, you talked about uh, before how Bigsby was like, I'm transferring. And then he heard Nix was transferring. He's like, oh, oh, word? Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm good. Because I think the offense, they they like, kind of like the Spencer Rattler, I think they tailored the offense to Nix and other people suffered as a result. The fact that Bo that uh, Tank Bigsby still got 1,000 yards – even when we knew, you know, he was getting carries taken away from him from Knicks, I, I think that says something about him. I'm eager to see what Auburn uh, running game looks like next year. Me too. Yeah. I mean, that that could make all the difference in their season if they can, yeah. um, if they can figure out something with the offensive line like we talked about, and they can get a quarterback in there because we we've seen T.J. Finley, and we know that T.J. Finley's not the move. He couldn't cut the mustard at LSU behind Max mm -hmm. Max. Okay. Yeah. And he he was gimped up when it came time for the Iron Bowl, although he did find a little something from somewhere. I don't know if he got a little bit of Michael MJ's special juice uh, to, you know, like he's like, oh, man, we playing we playing against the, tool, the, the goon squad. Oh, man, let me drink my juice real quick. Um, but for the most part, he didn't show us much. I mean, the fact that he couldn't win the job at LSU behind Max and then. He couldn't win the job from Bo Nix. So he's not going to be the starting quarterback next year. So we, yeah. it'd be interesting. It'd be very interesting. Or, or, or alternative, if they get the offensive line together and he's the best they got and they get a decent, uh, they can get a decent run game going. Um, yeah. You know, that might be, he I, might become serviceable. He might be like, I the, think that's the question. I think that's the question. And do you, now you do you now put all your eggs in one basket of Tanks Bigsby and run him the ball and then have a situation where you have good defense, run the ball, and then kind of you know kind of like I mean like 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 Georgia's pattern. You have a stout defense. Not saying theirs is, but you build up your defense. You have a good running game. We know what Tanks Bigsby can do. He can get over a thousand, and then you make Finley just just do what you need to do. 
don't you don't know, don't make mistakes. Take right. what the defense gives you, run the rock, and just slowly, methodically, just keep matriculating that ball. Just keep pounding them. Your defense mm-hmm. will give you a couple points because of how good you know. Once they start getting better, um, but I mean, the, the your the blueprint you guys had this year, I think is is one hundred percent on point. Run the rock, do get some play action passes, rely on that stout defense, and hey, play four quarters. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Four yep. quarters of football, not right. two quarters of football, <laughs> not you know, not well, two quarters key. of football. That's key. Yeah. You know, it's you got a college degree, not the associates, right? You, you know, the two right. Years, just years. Hey, ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with an associates. You know, just like yeah. Gary Owen right. said, I got my, I got my associates. Yeah, I got my associates. I'm working on my associates. I, I got my associates. Them. I don't have either, so I can't say. <laughs> hey, hey, but, hey. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm right there. Well, I'm I, right there. I can't say nothing. I just got my bachelor's last year, so. Shout out yeah, to you. I, That's what's up. That's yeah, what's up. I, yeah, I ain't I, no I, small feet, bro. Not at all. Yeah, right especially in the middle of COVID and working and working from home and trying to adjust to that. And yeah, I decided I wanted to join the army and be all I could be. And then I found out that there's certain activities that create children, and I had four of them. And then uh, <laughs> by the time I, by the time I. That was as diplomatically wow. as I could put that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, by the time I uh, got out of the military, I had, I had, I had, you know, four kids and four kids, and uh, uh, I had to get a job. And you know, college was. I tried a couple times, and I finally just said, "I'm gonna go ahead and pull this trigger." Oh, word! My job is paying. For, my job will pay for it. Word. Let's yeah. do this. Let's so, definitely do it. Yeah. <laughs> still working. Took a couple of semesters off from the masters, but I'll be back at that next year. There you go. Hit so, it up, man. But uh, anyway, go to the the, uh, the Oregon, uh, whatever uh, Lanning. I mean, like uh, he's he's coaching the ball game for us. But I mean, uh, didn't I see where he actually he hired uh, was the defensive coordinator from Alabama? He he got somebody from Alabama. I'm not sure what coach it was. Oh, really? Okay. I think it was because. Of, but I mean, my my question is, I mean, like, um, how much? How much? How much do you think he's going to be involved in this bowl game since he's head coach for very? I think so too. I mean, it was very. I think. I think. I. I think he. I think he commit. Listen, commit to the G. That. That's right, a big right. thing. That's a big thing right. in Georgia. Commit to the G, and he's committed to the G. And even though he has an obligation, he has to fulfill someplace else. After he leaves, he wants to make sure, especially after that SEC game, that these boys yeah. go out on a high note. Yeah, no, I agree. So, so you know, this this is not going to be a molly whopping. I don't think this is going to be a molly whopping like it was a couple weeks ago. I think they're going to come out swinging, and they're going to come out swinging hard. So, and plus that, you know, you know those big dogs, them, them junkyard dogs are mad about that Alabama game. Mm-hmm. It should be. <laughs> I mean, I I would not be surprised if, if Georgia-Michigan kind of turned out like uh, – Tampa Bay, Carolina turned out yesterday. Ooh, Could Brady? No, 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 no. It ain't gonna be like that. I, I'm just I saying. Actually, I actually <laughs> fear that you guys are so hungry for Bama. I actually kind of fear: is there any possibility that you overlook a Michigan? Even with, and, and that, 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 but that confirms it with that comment. If you think it's gonna be 32 to six, like with the goat in, over Carolina. That almost makes me feel like it's like okay, we're already looking towards Alabama. Michigan no, you, is no, no, very no. Much what I'm on y'all hear, hear me. Hold on a second. What I'm saying is this Friday will be a redemption for the defense from the performance that they put up in the last game. Yeah, because okay. because what what I'm saying is they're gonna come into this game going what we did in the last game is not who we are. We coming back in this game and show people who we've been all season. Yeah. But what happened that, in that? That's game? what I'm what, saying. What happened? Did they just not show up that day, Dude, or was it you want you want to systematically say, beat? You asking they, me like, like wait, 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 wait. You asking me like I was on the sidelines holding Kirby belt loops? I don't know. I was watching the same game he was going. <laughs> but see, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If that, so see, that's where we have to. That's where I, I'm trying to come from. Was it a fluke? Then I can just go back to thinking, okay, they're stout and I they don't have to worry about it the rest of the year. Or is that something where I'm like, well, Michigan's actually a legit team. Alabama at the core is legit. Do I need to worry about this game? And then going forward, if they do play Alabama again, 
are we talking fluke? Are we talking like this is what's going to happen again? Like that's one of the things so. where I'm kind of like, Ugh. I don't think so. I think I think it is my thought that if we play Alabama again, if we we beat Michigan and we wind up with Alabama again, this will not be a replay of um, Oregon versus you. Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? What is it? What is a Ute? I had to figure out a way to throw it in there somewhere. Um, but it's not it's not gonna be a replay. Like like Oregon got their butts kicked and made zero adjustments. It came back and got their butts kicked again. Right. I right. think that I, I don't think there has been I think this year is a better opportunity to win the CF to win the whole sh- shebang than it yeah. was in 2017. I, I I sincerely believe that. There you go. And and, and that's coming from the perspective of a fan who watched the Georgia defense have Alabama one oh, uh, yeah. two two that da- two downs away from right. winning the national championship. I think this team has a better opportunity to win the championship than that team two years ago. So hmm. I don't I mean, think I don't think that I, I I just I I chalk it up to a fluke. I will never be able to put a finger yeah. on what it was that happened. We may never know. There are conspiracy theorists that said that they were bought off, that, that Kirby was so a Kirby. There's was... no way that they just outright beat you? Like, there's no way that they just schemed you? Oh, they did. You? They did. Oh, okay, they beat okay, them. okay. But the, that's not, what I was saying. Yeah. But, the, but the miscues were uncharacteristic. Like, they never yeah. happened before. Like, I mean, I'm saying, like, leaving receivers uncovered, like the secondary. Right. I mean, yeah, secondary is suspect, but that never happened during the whole season. Yeah. Yeah, no, even – even if Why is this happening now? And it looks like the defense right. couldn't even get penetration. Like, they've been getting oh, – yeah, not that Alabama did anything special. I mean, they well, might – right. That's where I go old. back to them just being – they're still kids. They're still 17, 18, 19-year-olds. And yeah. when it comes to the brightest of bright lights – Well, that's – it, it, it just that, – that's all that I can attribute that to. Because there was nothing that I saw in that game – or leading up to that game, that would have led me to to the conclusion that we saw in that game. So well, that's why I'm kind of being like, huh? like both sides. Well, right, like, right. Alabama has not played that well all year. Exactly, exactly. And that's why that I'm asking game. the fluke. That's why I'm asking and the, it, the fluke. And you know here, I mean? is, and here's, and here's my thing. I agree. We played. We 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 had some games this season where we came into when coming into the game, the teams were highly touted. Kentucky was ranked number six in the freaking nation. Okay, you had Chris Rodriguez who was running up and down the field on everybody. Uh, Levis was Levis was slinging the rock all over the field because they had Rodriguez in the backfield. So it was like use the run, set up the pass, and they didn't do anything any differently than Alabama did. But Alabama was able to execute and execute well. And all of the game, I mean, we had games where people were trying to take the deep shot against us, and um, I don't think we got burned, but once. The Tennessee against Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I think we were down. With, we were down by Tennessee at, at the beginning of the game. Yeah, a, yeah. yeah. We, the, the only team that the only team that burned us downfield mm-hmm. all season was Tennessee. I mean, but Keely Ringo, Keely Ringo was back there. He was like, "Well, he's slinging a rock from his own 15. fifteen. I'll take a fifteen yard penalty to block this pass." You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but he wasn't getting outright beat, he, and even then, he wasn't outright beat. It's just that he didn't have a play on the ball. You know what I'm saying? And so for yeah. these guys to just be, I, I don't know. I They beat us. I, I can't speak to why we performed the way we did, but I can mm-hmm. definitely say it's like a, Sean and Colin, you and I have been saying, you, all of us have been saying this all season long. If the other team is not performing, you are supposed to beat their ass. And that's exactly what Alabama yeah. did. We did not yeah. perform, and Alabama took full advantage all game long. Is, is, there, is there a blueprint? Is it, did, did, did they supply a blueprint? On how to get the job done? I don't think so. I, I mean, mean other, like, other maybe, like, like I said, maybe. Kentucky was a good team coming into that game. Um, Florida wasn't. Florida was decent coming into that game. Florida had Florida I, had taken Alabama. I can't, I can't, to the you know I can't. You know I Is can't that do that. I, I have been on this show with you for nineteen episodes. I can't give credit to to Kentucky. I can't give credit to Florida right now. I'm not going to go as far as saying you haven't had the schedule. What I'm saying is, those teams, the schedule, did they? The Kentucky was five and zero, and they played Southeast Louisiana. And this, my thing is this. My my only thing is this: is there weaknesses? You know what I mean? I know oh. how Ringo. I know how those guys are studs. I know how they're top tier. My thing is, 
something Alabama did worked. So that my whatever things, whatever I if something messes up on me, I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm doing. What is it? Not, is it the you secondary? Know, the only, is it the D line? Did the D line get exposed? So or Sean, like, only, thing, only thing I can think of uh, with a uh, with respect to a blueprint is maybe they put a couple more people on uh, on uh, on uh, 99. Big baby. Yeah, yeah, big baby. Maybe they put some, Heck, yeah. You know, maybe they put a couple more people on him than he's like had. Triple on, team. Uh, you know, yeah, something. triple team sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, as far as the blown coverages, I have no answer for that. I mean, I don't yeah. think anybody does. Like I'm well, saying, so- I don't know what, what. I mean, they were the same DBs that have been playing all year. I mean, how do they right. miss right. miss this kind of play? You know what I mean? Well, we we also had the conversation. I don't, Colin. I don't remember if it was you and I, or if it was me and Nate, or if it was probably it was me and you, Sean, about something about the mystique of playing a team that you have a difficult time beating. Yeah, like oh yeah, talk, oh, definitely. Like definitely. we talked, we talked about, uh, we talked yeah. about. The, as the example, we use Harbaugh with Ohio State. Yeah, you know, yeah. If Harbaugh wasn't able to beat Ohio State until a few weeks ago, and he's been playing them every single year. You know, yeah. we don't play Alabama every single year, but it seems like every time we play Alabama, we could beat the hell out of everybody else all year, and then play Alabama, and it's like I don't know how to football. Will you teach me how to? And football? even we can beat the hell out of them in the first half. Like we can beat the hell out of them in the first half. We find a way, and they keep chipping away, and then they and they change whatever. It out. Go ahead, hit the right. button. Hit the button. Hit the well, button. We've we've already we, we've we've already established that in college football there is no coach greater than second half adjustments than Nick Saban. Period. Point blank. Yeah. I don't care who you are, Urban Meyer. He's we see how that went. Of college, uh, you know, Urban Meyer. Uh, 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 what's his name? Trestle. You can take. You can roll out all the the great. Uh, maybe maybe Bobby no. Bowden. I'll give Bobby yeah. Bowden and Jimmy Johnson, but in the modern era, right now, but, in the last can we 15, put Urban years, Meyer at the bottom of that, please? Just because all I, when I see Urban, all I see is Jags right now. I can't. Well, that. yeah, and I, I just, I called his name because I was trying to think of Jim Trestle. Yeah, uh, sweater vest. <laughs> I, had, I had Ohio State stuck in my head, and I had sweater vest, and Urban Meyer was the first thing uh, popped yep, up. And glasses, right? <laughs> right, but I mean, maybe, maybe if you go back in the nineties, there was some great second, but right now. Coaches that are actively coaching right now, I I don't know a single coach that does better at second no. half adjustments than Nick Saban. I agree. I nope. agree. I mean, I, even the season that Coach O had, uh, they never really played from behind. Did that championship right. season? They just came out and just started beating people upside the head, and it was like, "What you gonna do? You ain't gonna catch us." Yeah. Um, and as, as we see, <laughs> he's continuing to do that in the NFL, throwing for five twenty five against the Ravens yesterday. Oh, that Joe boy Burrow. is nasty. God. I love, I love his quote too. He's like, hey, they did it. Uh, he said they kept the reason he was scoring up on them. He's like, hey, they did it to us. <laughs> y'all did it. To, y'all did it to us. <laughs> no mercy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it ain't no fun yeah. when the rabbit got the gun, is it? Anyway, hey, right. hey, which which is why yeah. I understand. Let me let me make this public plea. I'm okay right now. I understand why I bore the brunt of all of the Redskins. Uh, all, all of the, the hate from the Cowboys because a year ago I was Colin. I was unruly. I was oh oh no deck oh that doesn't what does that mean oh and I, I I let them have oh it I, I let them have it Thanksgiving Day Christmas I I was I was I was I was raw it wasn't right so today I expect it so be careful what you say just don't talk trash just. Sit back. I've learned. I've learned that a long time ago. Like I, I have, I've been very quiet on Facebook. I don't say a yep. word. Not a Nothing. word. I can't do it. Cannot do it. Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> Until can't game, do it. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's all they're waiting on. Oh, yeah, it was rough. Bro, they could not wait to get it. Look, dog. Look, it was like. Not to use this analogy, but it was almost like your first day in the penitentiary, and they were just looking at you, <laughs> like fresh meat, fresh meat on the line. Right, <laughs> like Terry Crews, <laughs> fresh fish on the line. <laughs> with, his, with his lip going, fresh feet on the line, fresh fish right. on the line. <laughs> I am a boy, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man, it's what the hell? Yeah. So since we're here, since we're here, and we're talking Georgia, since we're talking Georgia. Uh, we will go ahead and just jump into Georgia, Michigan, and the Orange Bowl. Um, they're facing a team that probably has the strongest rushing threat they have faced all season. 
And that's being that's realistic. That's looking back at the schedule. Chris Rodriguez was probably the biggest threat, and that was neutralized. This is probably the biggest rushing threat they faced all season. Um behind Brian Robinson. And the only reason Brian Robinson has an asterisk is because he pulled his hamstring uh halfway through the SEC championship game. But I mean, Hassan uh Hassan is nasty. I can't even remember the boy's last and, name. And Hassan Haskins and B Corum. Hassan Haskins has twelve hundred yards. B Corum has nine thirty nine. Ooh, yeah. That's a two headed monster in that back. So you got, you got, you got, you, you basically, you, you basically, we are playing against the Michigan version of Michelle and Chubb in the backfield right yep. now. Right. Yep. And we're going to have to yep. figure out a way to shut that down because if we don't, I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be problematic. Yeah. I mean, that rush defense has got to come back to where it was. It's got, it's got to, it's got to. I mean, we got to have bodies flying around the field. We got to have. Nicobe Dean, big baby going in there and just opening up a hole and Nicobe Dean flying in there and knocking somebody's block off. Yeah, we've got to we got to we've got to get back to that. Yeah. We've got to get I, back there. Yeah. I cannot I cannot say this enough. They are almost a spitting image of you. McNamara doesn't throw the ball that much. He only he has just under 2500 yards. But yeah. he doesn't make mistakes. 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. They run the rock. They play great defense. And the quarterback doesn't make mistakes. They, I mean, it, it is literally a mirror image of you guys. You guys run the rock. You you play good quarter. You play great defense, and your quarterback does not make mistakes. This, I am so eager to see this game because I think this is an even match. Like I, I am ready. Yeah, I um, I, I think of the two games, this one is of the two games in the play with playoff implications. This game is probably the more evenly matched, I would say, yeah. just because uh, Alabama's got Alabama's got weapons for day. Now, Mechie's out for the season, and that's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Robinson is uh, – I think he's still questionable. He probably will be a game, uh, a game day decision. He'll hopefully he'll play. I mean, we'll hopefully, for, hopefully for them he will play. Uh, but he, he he probably I mean I pulled a hammy before it don't it, it doesn't just fix itself in a couple of weeks mm, yeah I mean he's not going to be a hundred percent and that and he's he's one of those guys that he can either if you give him a hole he can barrel through the hole and and break for daylight or he also has that ability to stop and read the line you know he can stop and read and cut and right. him with that with that bum mm -hmm. hamstring is going to leave him a little uh mm -hmm. is going to leave him a little bit timid yeah he's, yep. he's gonna be a little timid and you know he's gonna really i i could see him on the bike like go out for a couple of plays and then be on the bike just trying to keep his hammy stretched out um mm -hmm. now cincinnati as far as cincinnati and alabama where are we at there fellas i mean let, and, and, and let's let's be realistic i will go ahead and give my take i think i think if there's any team capable of upsetting alabama outside of texas a&m that is Cincinnati because Cincinnati has for two years now running been like, keep underestimating us if you want to keep yeah. underestimating us. If you want to, we're going to show you, they almost got us in the peach bowl last year. I mean, they took yeah. us down to the wire. Yo. And actually I sent you the footage of, of that game. Look, the way to beat Alabama is to play them play exactly like you played to start against you guys. They had you guys down 21 to 10 in that game before they couldn't hold out. They couldn't play four quarters of ball. Y'all obviously came back. The depth came into play. Your defense came into play, and you came back and won the game. They're going to have to do what you said, Anthony, all year long, punch them in the mouth and keep beating them down and get to a point where you're you're up 21-28. You're going to have to get up multiple touchdowns because Alabama's going to make a run. We already know it. Alabama's mm -hmm. going to start hitting it. Auburn tried to keep them, you know, quiet all game, and eventually Alabama gets it gets it done. I will say that hopefully Cincinnati now keys on um, Jameson Williams, but keying on Jameson Williams, as we've seen, he's the next in line of the Alabama super receiver, the next mm -hmm. Julio, Calvin Ridley. You know, he's the next one of those mm -hmm. guys, Jerry Judy. So you're going to have to put a couple guys on him. I, I will say Kobe Bryant, RIP to, to the real Kobe Bryant, but this guy is C-O-B, uh, Kobe Bryant for Cincinnati, won the Jim Thorpe Award to the best defensive back in the land. 
So he is definitely going to probably going to have him all day long. And, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be my horses versus yours. I mean, scheme is going to come into play and momentum is going to play a factor. But just like we talked about the Georgia game, Sometimes when it's one thing to try to scheme and get up, but when you get into the when you get into the arena and you're going up against that mighty Goliath, your teams are shell shocked, and we've seen it all year. Yeah, you know? it, it, what the what's, what's the saying has popped up the last couple of years? You got to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm-hmm. What whatever what works, what it, what your bread and butter is, what works, you got to yeah. figure out a way to work that. Yeah, I mean, I, what? I'm, I'm thinking back on Sean, is like, I mean, I've been harping on this for Georgia. I mean, the, the key to beating Alabama really doesn't seem, in my mind, is not that hard. Like, I mean, you just – and the thing I think we have trouble with, other teams have trouble with, is deviating from the thing, the things that work. Like, I mean, yeah. you like Sean, you said, you know, keep the foot on the neck and keep it there. Don't don't yeah. deviate. You, you have things that are working. Do not you – know, don't try something different. Yes. Don't try a trick play. Yes. Just keep doing the same thing. I mean, yeah. well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. Just, just keep doing it. But then again, you know, and maybe you'll get up, you know, enough points where they don't have a chance to come back and, you know, to to you know, come back and try to, you know, what we've had in the past to beat us. You know I mean? Get close and then, you know, end up winning the game. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, just that's the main thing to me. And getting to the backfield, making the quarterback make bad decisions and then, you know, keep doing that. Rushing, yeah. you know, that's how A&M beat him. I mean, like. Yeah. How did Washington beat Tom Brady this year in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? You keep yeah. him off the field. We doubled them up on time of yeah. possession. Yeah. Keep him on the bench. That's right. the only they're, they're gonna have to keep Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winner, on the bench. This man is a monster. We already know what it Again, is. Yeah. You guys keep him on the bench. That's the only way. Hey, look at that. Shout out to uh, yeah. shout out to our homeboy, Agent 2-3. Uh, Mario Foster, I'm gonna wait a minute. Let me see how do I do this, Sean, so I can get your face in the picture here. <laughs> Go to uh, it's three. Oh, yeah, that, that one, three side by side right there. There yeah, we I go. I think that's yeah, that's the best way to get it. Says yeah, uh, University of UGA should not have lost the SEC championship, right. it was suspect the way the game went. Yeah. All of a sudden, UGA played the way Alabama played all year long. Yeah, he's right. basically he's saying they swap roles, and yeah. I, I, I got I got no answer for that. Uh, Chief, I don't. Uh, shout out to our uh, shout out to the homie. Uh, shout out to the big homie. Where is it? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I tried to put it back boom, like boom, it was. Boom. Yeah, there it is. Uh, shout out to the homie, uh, Mario Foster. Uh, brother, my another brother from another, uh, our Athens native. Uh, uh, a a a a professional softball player, bar none. Was nice. just recently inducted into the Fairfax Softball Hall of Fame. Awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, tour, tours the country doing things for our uh, for our wounded war softball tournaments for our wounded warriors. Uh, there's actually one softball tournament he does where he gets to he gets to rub elbows with uh, all right, Mr. All right, all right, all right himself. Uh, right. Uh, you know, yeah, nice, yeah, that guy. nice. Yeah, so, <laughs> so appreciate you, my brother. Love you to death. Thank you for dropping in and uh, and uh, giving your two cents on the show. Feel free to drop some more comments. We got plenty. We got plenty. He and I have that whole superhero connection. My dude, my my guy is Batman. His dude is Superman. So, uh, you know, I call him Clark. He calls me Bruce. That's our thing. There you go. Mm-hmm. There that's you my go. that's my guy. That's my guy. Big dude. and uh, Colin calls him Big Dog because yeah, he's, 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 he's one of the few people in my circle of friends I got to look up to when I talk to him because I generally am <laughs> one of the no taller guys in the group. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you if you've never if you've never seen somebody crush a softball. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I used to <laughs> we used to go out to the uh, complex down off of uh, 28 and watch him play softball. I mean, like he was crushing balls. I'm almost all the way out to the street. Ooh, like past the parking lot. Good gracious! Past the parking lot. Uh, let's see. He says also Stetson Bennett is not the problem. He didn't play defense, and the defense failed. Now he did have a couple go. of picks. Nice. He did have a couple of picks, but you, you can't put all of that. You can't put all of that on him because the defense's job, like we said before, after the game, defense's job is okay. They got the ball back. We need to stop them from getting in the end zone, and they were not able to do that. Yeah. So that brings up a point, though. Uh, it did that affect our defense them being on the field as much as they were? You know what I mean? Because I mean. I don't know. Huh. Had, had they been on, had they been on the field that much, you know, in other games? No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. 
Well, but generally, they, generally, they, generally, they, they get out there. They force a three and out, and a you know a three and out, and um, or a turnover on a you know a turnover uh, on downs or a fum- yeah. you know a you know a fumble or interception. Well, and that's, that's the, the, the offense, side. and then the yeah. offense, the offense would come on, and the offense would come on, and grind it out. Right, you know that that's the other side. They were they were put George. You got George was put into a position all around, and they hadn't been it. You remember the stat they said in the fourth quarter about Stetson Bennett throwing the most passes that he's thrown in the fourth quarter in any game because they hadn't been in that position. You know what I mean? And there's something to be mm-hmm. said to be in those type of positions where then you have experience in that, and they right. they didn't have that. Right. You know? Yeah, and he's he makes an absolute he makes an absolute point again. Alabama yeah. pressured him like we should have pressured Bryce Young, and we didn't put oh, that yeah. pressure on him. Yeah. And Bryce Bryce Young is that quarterback that you do not. I mean, just about every quarterback we've seen that has played for Nick Saban, you do not give them time to get rid of the ball because we've right. seen what happened with Tua, with Hurts, with Bryce Young. It, it, it happens. Goes yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So – that's that's you know that's definitely where that is. So where do you see? So, but I never did get a prediction from you guys on that game. So who you got? Uh, Alabama, Cincinnati. I'll go first. I, got, uh, yeah, I go would ahead. say, uh, I mean, Alabama's like you said, Sean. If anybody, any team's going to beat them, I think you know Cincinnati's got a good shot. Um, mm-hmm. But if they do beat them, it's going to be like last play thing, field goal probably. But it all depends on it all boils down to if they can keep keep the game manageable and keep close to them and not let them get out of, out of reach. Um, I am going to say Alabama is going to win it though. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know what the score will be, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be a blowout or what, what have you, but I think they're going to win. But I, I think I was going to say, I was going to say the, uh, the, what was the uh, over under? I mean, the, uh, the line on this game, I just saw it. It was 13 and a half Alabama, and the over under they expect this to be a shootout 58 58 over under. Oh, wow, that's pretty high. Wow, I I think I foresee this one being more of a squeaker than everybody gives a credit for because, like I said, I Desmond Renner, no, Desmond Renner, and those boys are on a mission, and I don't think they're going to go down. I don't think they're just going to come in and get knocked down and be punched out. I think they're going to go to if they do go down, they're going to go down swinging. So, yeah. I, I foresee a light show a serious light show in that game well, what you got sean uh, i say 27 21 cincy i think wow. this they make this their super bowl and they play their butts off i think oh, this good. might be this might cause them though to lose the natty uh, because they're going to give everything because like you said this is this is it this is their this is their platform to show everybody that they're the best thing you know and, that they, and that they belong in the playoff Right, right. I think this is going to be for them kind of like Boise State over Oklahoma. But the thing about Boise State over Oklahoma is Boise State didn't play anybody after that. You know, they didn't have to. So they were able to leave everything out on the field. I think Cincinnati is going to have to do that to beat Alabama. And I say it's going to be 27-21, and they're going to stop Alabama late in the game. Um, But then I think after that, they're going to to be beat by whoever wins your game. So, Sean, going to – do you think Alabama is going to overlook? You think there's a possibility that they will overlook Cincinnati? I mean, I don't, I don't know if Saban will let his team do that or, or they do that. But come I, on, I, man, I, you know, you know Saban, no, yeah. you know Saban loves feeding his team that rat poison. Yeah, right, right. That rat poison was delicious. I don't think it's going to be an overlooked situation. I think um, Cincinnati is going to literally come out swinging, and they're just yeah. going to come out because that's the only way they were able to hang tight with y'all last year. They had to get up that twenty-one point. You know, twenty-one ten lead, so that they could. You know, I'm in this, and then all of a sudden, you guys woke up and started playing and got yeah. the job done. I think it's going to take them like really coming out, like really get popping them in the mouth to right. to have a shot. Um, yeah, but no, I mean, and then and then Alabama, look, they look. Let's be honest with you, they did pull out a little miracle because nothing in the world. Showed us what all the all the analyzing we've done all year. Nothing showed us what we saw that day, and no, we still yeah. today. That's why I'm asking you. I wasn't trying to be mean. I'm sitting here like, look, I we studied this. I watch football four or five times. You know, I watch so many games a day. There's nothing prepare me for that. I could not have picked. That. Hey, we're looking for answers too, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. We're looking at answers right. too. 
So that so that's why I'm saying that's why I'm just like you know what I you know Alabama they might have maybe maybe they just gave it all maybe that was their Super Bowl that was like we have to beat Georgia to make you know let us feel like we're this and that and I think we we can shock them I think Cincinnati can shock them I yeah you them. you been hey look I again again the next time I see you I'm gonna have to owe you a drink because I rode you hard when you picked Cincinnati <laughs> to make the playoffs. Early in the season, he said Cincinnati. I said, "Who? Yeah. I, I, if I, if we ever get a chance to hang out after all this is said and done, whether you're here or I'm there, your first one's on me. Yeah. Now the rest, the rest of it, the rest, the rest, the rest, the rest of them, that's all on you. Just don't spend too much because we don't want you to, have to sleep on the couch. You had to sell, sell it already, already oh. on the couch. <laughs> Look. So, hey, those of you that have just joined us in the last few minutes, welcome to this week in SEC football." I am uh, Mr. Fingers from Zach and Central, along with my co-host here, the brother from another, Colin, and my homie, right. the shout-out king, Sean Spencer, who's doing a lot better after an unfortunate <laughs> incident earlier today that we won't get into the details of. Uh, uh, this particular segment, we're not really moving into a segment, but I do need to give them their props and their shout-out, brought to you, ladies and gentlemen, by 1906 Tees. Yeah. This is another place where you can get all of your custom gear made, custom tees. I got to talk to my dude because he's, uh, I got to talk to my guy because he's supposed to be working on one for me and I don't have one. For, I have to talk to him, but get at him today. He will hook you up. You got the email, you got the address right there, squareup.com backslash store backslash 1906 tees. Visit him today to get your custom sports gear. Thank you so much for being a segment sponsor of the show. Uh, yeah. We're going to keep this thing moving and get into some of these other bowl games because we don't want to spend the whole show. I mean, we could. We don't want to spend the whole show talking uh, Georgia because <laughs> basically we basically just said Georgia, Alabama, who's going to win. Um, tomorrow night, we got the Birmingham Bowl. We got number 20, Houston versus Auburn. Uh, and we're just going to kind of go round robin on this, let you guys give your thoughts on this one. Uh, Auburn comes in at 6-6. Six and six. Houston, ranked number 20, comes in at 11-2. and two. Um, what do you got? Well, actually, I'll give my take on you know, Sean. I'm sorry, I said I was gonna let you go first, so we'll go to you. <laughs> I'm fine, okay. I'm fine. I'm, I'm blinking. Fine. I'm, fine. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm okay. All right, I'm not gonna suicide watch anymore. Dang, God, I got through. Right? You know what happens when a woman, your woman says she's fine, right? <laughs> right, right, you're right. Well, exactly. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. fine right now, nope. into the world, right. Yo, hey, Houston, yo, shout out to Houston, number 20 ranked. They only got two losses, one of them being to Cincinnati in the conference championship. I think the other one's like the Southern Miss, somebody really bad. But, hey, the coach of Houston. Texas Tech. Used to, Texas Tech, right. The coach of Houston is the, the same coach that used to coach over at West Virginia, had them going. He was, uh, Will Greer was his quarterback. Always had them kind of like they, – they always, you know, win, lose two or three games, but they'd always be in the hunt. He's a good coach. He had uh, Derek King last year, but then Derek King transferred to Miami. Um, but Houston is they're, – they're a solid team. They're a solid program. And with the fact that Auburn has the transfers and the people out, I'm not necessarily sure who's playing. I got Houston in this one. Um, I, I want to say about 35-21. All right, Colin. We go come to you. What you got, man? Yeah, I got. I, I agree with Sean. So we we don't know. We we don't know if Bonex is playing this in this uh, bowl game. Probably not. He's, he's not. Yeah, no. he's not. Okay. Yeah, I would go with Houston too because they're always they're always in the conversation. I mean, they've been in the conversation for a couple of years. I mean, not. I mean, in and out of the top twenty, uh, top twenty five. Um, I guess the over. I'm sorry. The line is uh, actually Auburn by two, which I think you know Houston's going to win it outright. Um, they. Predicted to be a high scoring game, 50 once. I mean, I don't know, man. Um, I'll go, I'll go Houston 28 21. Well, here's, here's what I got for my, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pull the Nate Snell. Let me check my notes. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to our guy, Nate Snell, host of the Big Nate podcast, doing big things over there, Mr. Late Night. You gotta, you gotta kind of take a nap after you get off work so you can catch him when he yeah. comes on because you can't work a full work day and do all your other stuff and then stay on. And he's kind of like, he's kind of like uh, Nick at night except for ESPN, is, but different. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> right. I just said, um, yeah. Has he been in the comments? I just, I just sent him the the link because I was like, I haven't heard from him. 
I don't know, man. He might be prepping for his show because you know he's he's moving over right. to the same platform. He so right, he's trying he to right, work right. all the ins and outs of figuring out how to work this. Um, this is what I got. Um, we got Houston at eleven and two with uh, the number seven overall defense in the country. Yeah. Um, and the number four scoring defense. They've only allowed um sixteen points per game. Uh, and then Auburn at six and six at number fifty nine overall defense. The number 33 scoring defense in the country, 22 points per game. Um, they got no Bo Nix. Finley is definitely not the move. Um, and like I said, the only losses that Houston has had, the one to Texas Tech was probably a fluke. It was probably maybe early season, season nerves, mm -hmm. but they managed to, uh, you know, <clears throat> rejuvenate that. And the only other loss they had was to the conference champion, who's now in the CFP. So right, right. edge on this one's definitely going to Houston for me. I just there's no way. I I mean, the, the uh, Harson's got to reach deep in his bag of tricks if they're going to beat Houston for this one. Um, that's what we got for the Birmingham Bowl. All right, moving on to the Liberty Bowl, which is going to be same day, six forty five p.m. Eastern uh, on ESPN. Speaking of Texas Tech, it features six and six Texas Tech. Versus seven and five Mississippi State, Colin. I'm going to come to you first. What you got? Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go with Mississippi State. Um, I'm just looking at the the line here. Just like uh, Rogers. I mean, he's he's bought out uh, this year. He's got over four thousand yards uh, passing and thirty five touchdowns, uh, eight interceptions. Um, that's what they got. ESPN. ESPN's got him at uh, like. Mississippi State's got by 10, over-unders 58. Yeah, I say Mississippi State probably 35 to 24. That way. All right, Sean, coming your way. What you got, sir? Um, oh, man. I kind of got to agree with you. I mean, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily sold on them before, but, you know, Mike Leach, that offense, Will Rogers, yeah. one of the top five passers in the country. Yeah. Um, that offense moves and grooves, man. And they, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it them that beat Texas A&M like right before Texas A&M beat Alabama? Was it Mississippi State? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, 26 22, Sean. Yeah. So, yo, shout out to them. We know what their passing offense is like. Texas Tech has been has had a history of having that kind of passing offense. This is where Patrick Mahomes came from. You know, we know they put the ball up there. They throw it all the time. So I'm looking for a high-scoring game on this one. Uh, but I think Mississippi uh, State will uh, get the W. I'm saying like 45-35. Yeah, I, well, I'm going to go ahead and make this one unanimous. I gave the edge to Mississippi State also. Number one factor in this game, Will Rogers. I mean, yeah. you just – you just – you got a guy that throws for 4,000 yards. I mean, he's averaging <laughs> – he's average – he is averaging 370 yards per game. Yeah, and, and with a, a seven and five season, he's averaging three hundred seventy yards per game. That means that he could definitely put the ball in the air. Yeah. Um, so, and Texas Tech has had a, yeah, I mean Texas Tech middle of the road in a iffy Big Twelve conference. Who mm. whose two dominant teams all season were essentially Oklahoma State and Baylor. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know, I mean, I don't not to not to throw the Sooners under the bus, but you know, the Sooners mm. were just. Yeah. Texas scored 70 on them, so that lets you know where they're at. Yeah, and <laughs> we, we know how Texas' season went. Right. So <laughs> that lets you, you know, know what? That leads me to my that leads me to uh that leads me to my next question before we even get into the bowl game. We're back. Are they we'll back see. yet? We'll see. Once they get, let's see, let's see Sark. Once They're he gets his recruits, once Sark gets his recruits, let's see, let's see. But not right now, no, not at all, not at all. Yeah, and they, and and they scored seven. Well, actually, they were back for a hot second during the beginning of the season. Yeah, they just they they played uh, Oklahoma, and then it was a wrap. Uh, let's see here. We got some more comments rolling in. Thank you for joining us, those of you that are hanging out with us today. From Kenneth Brown, it says uh, UGA would look much better with safety Chris Smith playing. True. Hurt his knee against Tennessee and didn't start against Alabama. They started a fifth-year senior who never started. Um, 
You know what? There you hey, there you go. Hey, that's a thought. Maybe it's time for some. Maybe it's time to throw some fresh blood in there to, to you know to rejuvenate the troops and get everybody back refocused. Kenneth, thank you so much for joining the show. Appreciate you. Um, of course, my wife would. Make, okay, I'm gonna read you guys a text right now. My wife says, "I want Italian. Do you want me to order you some chicken fettuccine? Speak now, or I'm gonna order for you." We're in the baby. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me see if she hears me. Yes, order me some chicken fettuccine, please. Thank you. Is a DoorDash? I love you. Mustard too. DoorDash bottle of mustard. <laughs> With the do- stop it. Wait. <laughs> Not the DoorDash bottle of mustard. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I still had to text her. She was like, yes or no. She didn't hear me. Uh, she must have her earbuds in. Anyway, um, moving, on to, <laughs> moving on to the next game. Moving on to the next game. Wednesday night, uh, 9-15 ESPN. We got the Alamo Bowl, number 14, Oregon, against the aforementioned number 16, OU Sooners. Um, I'm going to go first on this one. I got to be honest with you. I got to be honest with you. Um Oregon struggled to find their identity this season. They were up, they were down, they were up, they were down. Um, I mean, they beat Ohio State early in the season, didn't they? That was them. Oregon did, yes. Oregon did, yes. Yeah. And yeah. and and after that win, it seemed like they were on a tear, but then they kind of struggled during the middle of the season. And of course, then we know what happened uh when it came down to the conference uh, championship. Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? <laughs> What's a Ute? And, and then uh, we know how that went. And then uh, and then a couple of weeks later, they were like, who are we playing in the game for the conference championship, coach? And coach went, did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? Yeah, so they got Uted twice. And, uh, yeah, that's a verb. I just made that up. Hey, Colin, write that down. Uted. Write, write, that, write that one down, Colin. Uted. We gotta, yeah. we, we're coming yeah. up with T-shirt. We're coming up with T-shirt ideas on the fly, y'all. We got, we got speaking of. We got fly gear over right. in the Zagnif Apparel Shop on Spread Shop. We got um, we got uh, we got our uh, our uh, Collins catch. What Bama does, what Bama do, and then uh, we got the uh, the lie that caught that lie that Lincoln Riley never told out loud. We got one coming for the Atlanta Falcons. Is we not talking leather helmets? And now we got <laughs> and now we got you've been muted. That's what we have been you. <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that I would have to pay name, image, and likeness to have Joe Pesci on the shirt, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm find a tip, a picture of that tuxedo, and then um, are you some kind of way to. <laughs> are you mocking me, Mister Gambini? Mocking you, just now. <laughs> I think I get the point. No, I don't no. think you do. Now you're in contempt of court. Anyway, moving this anyway. thing along. Oregon versus Oklahoma. I got this pretty even. Oregon struggled to find their identity after a couple of uh, losses in the season. And then, of course, we know how the end of their season went. And OU, the question is going to forever be asked going forward is how distracted was Lincoln Riley during the season? Because he had this backdoor deal working pretty much from the, the couple of months after they announced that OU in Texas. Like, basically, he let OU make this move to the SEC knowing that he was planning on leaving. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he's pretty much been distracted all season. Then you had the quarterback controversy and yada, yada. So I pretty much got them even up. I don't know what the line or the over under is. Bro, I was um, going to say y'all both will be surprised at this. I got it right here. So you got Oklahoma by seven. You're over under 60. But ESPN has them, Oklahoma, as a 70% uh, win. And really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean that—that's that, the hell out of me. So, yeah, and Too then you got or then then to boot, you've got Oregon with no coach because Landing is going to stay with us until the season is done, and so they're going to have an interim coach. And you got OU is Venables going to coach the ball game? I don't know. Hmm. So, so you know, both teams are new coaches and quarterback controversies already brewing in Oregon and all kinds of stuff. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Colin, what you got? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking at this. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm surprised at the, what the ESPN's got here. But um, yeah, I mean, all that, st- all that off the field stuff 
I mean, it's gonna it definitely got to play a part in this um, and the coaching and stuff. Uh, I think I'll go OU on this one. I mean, I think OU is gonna pull the upset here. Um, I think uh, what do I say? Twenty? Oh, no, it's gonna be be a high scoring affair. I say 35-24. Oh, go home. All right, and uh, and and Mr. Sean, your 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 input on this one, sir. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double down on Oregon. I know I picked them against Utah and they got smacked, and I picked them again and they got smacked. But I, I, I I'm, I'm no hoping maybe, <laughs> maybe Brown is saying, "Hey, look, this is my last game." You know, let me let me go out. My coach left, and you know, I, last time I'm playing with these guys, maybe Anthony Brown will come out there and do something. They are literally identical in, in the stats from you know their stars. Both True. rushing, both running backs over 1,100 yards. Both wide receivers as stars are 30, 30 or 30 plus catches, about five, six hundred yards, and four TDs. Like they're the same team when it comes down to it, um, and they've had the same about probably amount of turmoil. So I really, I you don't know who you. I, I think I, I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna go Oregon, but it's 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 gonna be 28, 27. It's gonna be something crazy yeah, it feels close. Weaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say taste the soup, and you said I, I thought you would say ah, yeah, taste the soup. I, I that's what I to go with that. I was I was ready for you. He said, "Where's the spoon?" The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, beat Joe Lewis's ass. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, Joe Lewis was 175 years old when he fought. Anyway, uh, keeping this thing going. <laughs> And you lied. You ain't never met Martin Luther the King. Martin Got the wind King. out of me. Yes, he did. No, he did not. What you want your head to look like that for, boy? <laughs> See, y'all just got me started. Don't don't get me started. We'll be here all day. Hey, who gonna clean up all these flowers? Uh, right. <laughs> what is this, McDowell's? The place down on Queens Boulevard where the boy works. My son works. Um, okay, moving on along. Uh the mail, the Duke's mail bowl Thursday. <laughs> The Duke's Mayo Bowl, dude. That that, right. that I'm sorry. That is right. We're going, we're going. That is right. Hey, so, most important so we bowl go, of the year. We gonna call right. this one. We gonna call this one the care. We might they call it the Duke's Mayo Bowl. They might as well call it the Carolina Bowl because it features North versus South, the Tar Heels of North Carolina Let's versus the games cut the Gamecocks of South Carolina. I'm gonna yeah, be yeah, completely yeah. honest. I'm gonna be completely. Is this gonna be Kenny Howell's redemption song? Who Sam Howell? Sam Howell? Sam Howell, thank you. I'm, I'm mixing I, Sam Howell and Kenny Pickett together. Yeah. <laughs> if no, I, I and listen, listen before we go any further. If we start talking Los Angeles Rams and I say, uh, and I say Tim, y'all just go ah, just cut me off. <laughs> okay, okay, just cut me off. It's Sean. It's Sean. I'm working with Sean right now. It's Sean McVay. Not the other guy. So yeah, you think this is gonna be Howell's redemption song? Uh, hey, look, um, I don't know. It, it, there's two sides to it, man. Everybody expected him. He was a Heisman hopeful, but with the amount of things that he lost to the draft and and this and the, what his running backs and receivers are doing in the NFL right now, it's to be noted that he, you know, it. This was expected. I I want I would love to say we've we've had games two or three we put up fifty nine against Virginia we put up fifty nine I think against Duke we've had yeah. games where he just he just blows blows the top off and he just dominates and then we've also had games that we've lost that we definitely should not have lost um, so I think this year especially in this game with how South um, South Carolina, man, they've been on a run. We talked about them. They gained momentum yeah. as the season went on. Howell needs to get the job done, but you North just talked South, about that. You just talked about this right before you came on with us, peaking yeah. at the right time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, hey, look, one thing that I am sure of, and one thing that I'm very happy of, and we've talked about this many times, is Sam Howell playing in this game lets me know he's for sure coming back next year. Good. Playing this game. Pray for no injury. Hey, we get a W, we get a W. I just glad I get to see my team play one more time. All in all reality, I'm gonna say 45-34 North Carolina. I hopefully we go you out. Think, 
You Guns think it's going to be that? You think it's going to be that much of a margin of victory? I mean, South. I but just to put my two cents in there, South Carolina, like you said, uh, something Shane said to those boys got them all sparked up, mm-hmm. and uh, they've. I mean, they they scored that walk off touchdown against who was it that they beat with the walk off touchdown? One of I forgot Auburn. who it was. It was like twenty one to twenty. Uh, Auburn probably. Yeah. You pro- probably that's probably yeah. the one you're talking about. It was Auburn. Uh, yeah, twenty one seventeen. And, yeah, and but they got uh, Molly Wall right after by Clemson, though. I mean, like, <laughs> well, Clemson. Well, again, peaking at the right mm-hmm. time. Clemson. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, thing, yeah. I, I, th- I think the thing with Clemson and is not to, not to not to side not to sidetrack, but the thing with Clemson was once Clemson lost those first couple of games, and the spotlight fell off them, and they tumbled yeah. down into the lower ranks of the, and, and eventually out of the rankings, the top twenty-five. Right. And the spotlight was off. They were able to refocus. I mean, sure. remember, remember, we did the show, and I was like, "Holy crap, they're eight and four. When did they win eight games?" Yeah. Like, right. so you know, peaking at the right time. So they did what they, they needed to do. They also lost to Missouri, and they were that close. And know that whisper, whis- I mean, it came down to week twelve. They were whisper close to uh, getting a shot to play in the conference championship. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I I I think it's going to be closer. I think it's going to be. You know what? I would say it'll probably be in the 30s, but I say it'll be more like 31 to 37 in, in North Carolina. I'm still giving the edge to the Tar Heels, but I think it'll be 31, 37, something like that. Not quite as big a blowout there as you said. And uh, Colin, what you got, sir? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, UNC. I mean, uh, line uh, line is uh, nine points to the UNC way, and what do you got? 58 to over under. Um, yeah, I mean, I just I'm looking at the stats for you know the the quarterback there, the uh, how and uh, and Chandler and and Downs looks like they're, I mean, it, it's it's a big gap between what South Carolina's done. I mean, of course they've won some uh, hard games and some some notable games, but I think UNC's gonna beat them. Um, kind of give a score here. Uh, thirty. I, I actually I'd go thirty five twenty one is what I'll do. It's gonna be that okay. big. I All right. Cool beans. Gonna be interesting. Yep. All right, keeping this thing moving yeah, on along. Yeah, Sean actually needs Sean needs some some light in his life after getting <laughs> down. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, guys. You, <laughs> you you gonna make my hey look? You gonna make my man have a have a, a PTSD episode on you? He, he'll go full private Joker on you. Just, just hey, don't get some time later. Everything be all right. Get some time later. Cowboys, forty two points in the first half. Oh my god. And he, he's gonna be standing in his bathroom at three o'clock in the morning. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Uh, moving right along, Thursday night at three p.m. on ESPN, the Music City Bowl, Tennessee Volunteers versus Purdue, Tennessee. Another team that, um, while they did not perform as well as they wanted to, they still outperformed everyone's expectations of them for the season. So. Uh, Oh man! Uh, oh snap! Look who's in the building. Our boy Ab Low in the building. What's up, Ab? Hey. The shirtless wonder. We still repping it, Ab. I'm still here. He's, he's showing some help? love. He's showing some love. And uh, Kenneth Brown says Oregon because I don't owe you. Hey. Uh, Okay, Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth, uh, uh, give me a shout in the comments that you are. If you are an Oklahoma fan, I'm guessing maybe. Uh, let's drop in the comments. We might uh, we might be able to do a little something something for you. We we might have some uh, some swag for you that you might like. Uh, keeping this thing moving along. Tennessee. We said they kind of they underperformed, but they still exceeded everyone's expectations for this year. Uh, everybody's kind of high on the hog on their coach. Uh, but we know that Purdue, Purdue uh, they've taken to the calling them the spoiler makers after um, after several tremendous upset wins that they've managed to pull off over the last few years. I mean, some notables being Notre Dame. Uh, who did they beat this year? Who was it that they beat this year? That they were, uh, was it Michigan Wisconsin State. that they beat? Michigan, Michigan State, State when they were up in there. They beat uh, who else? Did they beat somebody else. Beat Iowa. 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 Yeah, so they 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 put they, they so you got the Purdue spoiler makers versus the up and com, coming volunteers. Our boy Ab says the volunteers will volunteer a win as hey. long as long as they're not volunteering us any condiments. I think we'll be able to get these. So um, 
<laughs> to those of y'all just joining us, thank you for joining us this week in the SEC football. I'm Mr. Fingers. That's the brother from another, Colin. That gentleman down there, most of you know him. He is the godfather of the Let's Talk Football f- series of shows. He's got like 800 of them. He's uh, he's got like 1800. <laughs> he's got he's got he's got the Let's Talk Football. They had the special edition show today, which was Let's Beat Up Sean. But the, the regular yeah. show will be back next week. Let's talk football. Yeah. Let's talk fantasy football. Watch the football <laughs> weekly. The roundtable. Um, the the Sunday preview show. He's got some cooking show. He's got a cooking deal going hey, on. Was, the was, the was when, they, when they announced the Tiger Woods at the like the Masters, they got the winner of this, the winner of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right you're, okay, we're done. All right. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Colin, I'm going to go to you first. Who you got, Purdue or Tennessee? Oh, man. I mean, I love what Purdue did. I mean, they had big wins. I mean, and, you know, Tennessee has kind of worked their way back to being – uh, you know, a pretty good team. I mean, they, I mean, they did have worked it back. Uh, I think, I think Tennessee's gonna actually gonna pull it out. I mean, I think it's gonna be a closer game than people think. Um, what am I looking at here? So, um, I would say Tennessee pull out probably actually what 14 points, 28 to 14. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what you got, Mr. Mr. Spencer? Um, yeah, I think this game is gonna hinge on Tennessee's pass defense. Um, Purdue in those games against Iowa and uh, Michigan State, they were able to put up big numbers on on their pass yeah. defense. And uh, Dave Bell is a receiver that you know, ninety three receptions, twelve hundred yards receiving. You know he's been balling out. So uh, I think they can do it. But I got to agree with you guys, Hendon Hooker. I've been shouting him out on this show all year long. I think the with if they are able to go with that no huddle up tempo offense. I do oh, yeah. believe that Tennessee is going to come away with this. I don't yeah. think – and Purdue, like we said, they're, you know, the Purdue spoiler makers. They've been uh, – the, all the studs, they put up 31 on on um, Ohio State. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So all those teams, the top-tier teams, they've been ready to knock them off. But Tennessee, it, I, I don't I don't know that, A, they're going to get up for this one. And Tennessee I, – I think Tennessee is a lot better. I mean, you know, I've been on their bandwagon all year this year. I think they're a lot better and, and maybe a little ahead of uh, the rebuild that, you know, uh, uh, you know, than, than maybe they, they might should be. I don't know. I like Tennessee. So I'm going Tennessee 27-24. Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> my family tree, my family name. But I am still thirsty. Okay, that's that. That was your DJ Fingers moment here on WJLA. Moving right back after a word from our sponsors too this week in SEC football. Hey gang, we're back. It's Mr. Fingers this week in SEC football. Moving on. Oh, wait a minute. What did, did I did I give a prediction? I did not. I'm gonna go with Purdue, and I'm gonna Ooh. give it to Purdue. I don't think it's gonna be a very high scoring affair. I, I think Purdue is gonna squeak one out, twenty four to nineteen. That's what I'm going with. I can dig it. Uh, let's see. Next game, the Outback Bowl uh, on New Year's Day. Number twenty-one, Arkansas versus Penn State. Uh, we got the number seven mm-hmm. defense in the scoring defense in the country, averaging sixteen point seven five points allowed per game in Penn State versus Arkansas, who will be led by KJ Jefferson, who is one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, premier quarterbacks in the SEC. He's he's a scrappy guy. I mean, he he didn't. He's not. Uh, he's not gaudy. He doesn't put up gaudy numbers, but right. he's a scrappy guy. He's a fighter. Remember the game where he had hurt his leg and he was on the sideline, like itching to go back in. Uh, so I I think um, to me, I'm going to give the edge to Arkansas in this one, and I am going to go with. Uh, we know Arkansas is a high flying pass 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 slash run offense. Uh. Huh. I'm going to say this was going to be like 41 to 36. Hmm. And shout out to our guy, uh, Nathan Snell. There like he I is. said, the king of Nate Light. Late night. I can't Hello, even say man. it. The king yeah, of late night. Yeah, we're going to put it. I'm going to put it. As a matter of fact, Nate, just for you. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me, let me do my, let me get my Nate on real quick. I need my pen. <laughs> I need my pen. Uh, checking my notes. Uh, it says Penn State here is the number seven starting D scoring defense in the nation. It will allow 16.75 points per game. I'm going to say Arkansas 
41 to 38. Guarantee. There we go. That's my name, Snell, right there. I got impersonations for all of y'all. Keep working on it. So what the point is, Sean, is Mr. Handy, I need to stop you for a minute. Sean, what we're talking about here, boys and girls. I mean, that's a, the cameo from uh, Mr. I Want to Smoke himself, Nick Nazario. We're going to come to you, Sean, since I'm picking at you so bad. Uh, what you got, man? Um, I um I got I got Penn State 21-17. I, I think Penn State is this this year has been a whole bunch of you know just dropped dreams and you know just failures and missed <laughs> missed opportunities. You said, you said Look, it like they had them all in a bag and they were <laughs> in a backpack, like Bruce Banner at the end of the Incredible Hulk and do 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 and he's walking down the street and they just got a rip in the bag and they just fell out. And they just start falling out. I mean, look, if you go back and you look at their season, yeah. it, it has just been one just upset and just misery after another. We talk about the game where they beat Auburn 28-20 early in the year. You get excited yeah. about that. They beat Wisconsin 16-10 early. But later in the year, we know about that, what, seven overtime game against Illinois that they lost. They were ranked seventh at the time, you know, mm-hmm. when they lose to them. They held it was, Penn nine, State. it was nine overtime, it was nine overtime. Or nine, right, right, exactly. They hold Penn State to 33 and only lose to them by nine, 33 to 24. Michigan, they had that game until mm-hmm. late in the game. Michigan gets that that uh passing touchdown and, and beats them 21-17. Penn State has been in the mix all year long. Sean Clifford, their quarterback, is a senior. This is last year. This is last around. I think they're going to put out – I think they're just going to put up just – this is it. This is our shot. You know, one yeah. chance, fancy, don't let me down. This is this is all they got right there. Um, but it's going to be close because both these teams, again, all these fallen, fallen hopes and dreams, man. They, <laughs> they, they, they came in thinking that this was their year, but <sighs> – <clears throat> Nah, and, then, and then Michigan winds up, <laughs> Michigan winds up winning the Big Ten. Q Nate with yeah. the sound effects. Congratulations! Oh, <laughs> oh my God! To answer your question, Nate, we did not talk about Maryland in the Pinstripe Bowl. Uh, we basically just kind of we're we're staying on the SEC train here. But since you brought that up, they are in the Pinstripe Bowl, and that is when that's earlier in the week. That's the 29th. That's Wednesday night, and they play Virginia Tech. Oh, I uh uh. They play Virginia Tech. Both six um, and six. They're both six and six. I'm giving the edge to Maryland. Um, I'm giving the edge to Maryland. Just, just my, just love for the Terps outright. Um, no, no specific reason. Haven't really followed either of them. Oh, very I mean, close with on, but I'm gonna give it. To- <laughs> I, I'm, give, I'm <laughs> giving. I'm giving. It, I'm, giving it, I'm, I'm giving the edge to Maryland. Uh, I'm making. I'm putting. I'm putting another one on this one. Um, Virginia Tech will not score a single point Ooh. until until midway through the second quarter. Oh, wow. I like with that. The, with, with the pin drop. Yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah. Ooh. I'm, I'm going to stick with you guys. Maryland, uh, Tulia, Takavailoa, you know, hopefully he can do his thing. Shout out to them. They're really building something over there. And not get hurt. Nathan. Yeah, well, got to stay on the field. <laughs> That's what we've seen. As long as those Takavailoa brothers can stay on the field – they are legit, but he's got to stay on the field. But yeah, I think they got the W in this one. I'm gonna go to Maryland solely on their uniforms. That's all. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing to base it on, just the uniform. Just the uniform. Nah, that, nah uniform. chocolate. Unis chocolate. Tight. I like chocolate. I'm going with the chocolate. <laughs> oh man, so where are we? We talked about the Outback Bowl. We are now at the Citrus Bowl. We got number 15, Iowa. Against number twenty-two Kentucky, um, hmm. uh, Iowa has the number fourteen scoring defense in the country. Um, Iowa is another case of ugh, missed hopes and dreams uh, yeah. this season because they were they were balling. They number were two. they were number balling. Two in the All they had to do was win out, and they couldn't get it done. Um, I think Iowa has something to prove in this game. Uh, I, God, you know what I realized? I'm picking against the SEC in a lot of these games. Uh, Kentucky okay. Kentucky is still – I think Kentucky can still get some things done, but I think Iowa comes in with with the Pringles, with the Pringles right there. 
Mm. So uh, Kentucky might suffer a little bit of the wrath of that as a result. So I'm giving this one to Iowa double digits. Um, 12-point win, Iowa 32, Kentucky 20. Hmm. And, Nate, I'll come back to your question as soon as we go around the horn here. Sean, let me get what you got. Um, Again, this is another one where the, the, both these teams are, are heavy run teams. We know about Rodriguez mm-hmm. over, at, uh, over at Kentucky. Uh, he has over 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. And then Goodson at Iowa has 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. So these are two very run-heavy teams. We can try, try to take pressure off the quarterbacks. Levis, you talked about him, Anthony, how he's been moving the ball up and down the field. Um, I, I really badly want to pick Kentucky on this, I'm going to tell you. And the reason being is because, like we said, we saw what happened with Iowa. We saw the Purdue that you know upset them. We saw how they were they were number two, and they it, the only thing that stopped them from being number two and in the Final Four is themselves. They yeah. didn't show up on multiple occasions. So I cannot really, I with with a, with a straight face, I cannot really say that I'm going to root for them. I got I or say that I, I believe in them. I and mm-hmm. I've seen Kentucky play this year. Kentucky's having a good year. I think they want to win it, end it with a 10 win season for, you know, I don't know, one of the first times in a while or, you know, when's the last time they had it. But I think Kentucky rises up and does this. And it's just another disappointment for Iowa. I think Mark Stoops is doing great things with that program there. And they mm-hmm. just signed him. They just uh, re signed him also. His name was being thrown about, about LSU and Oklahoma and things like that, too. And uh, our boy, West, hey, look, our boy Wesley was ready to fight anybody in the comment section on Facebook. <laughs> He's like, Mark yeah. Stoops is not for sale. I'll meet you on the 50 yard line <laughs> and fight each and every one of you. <laughs> that, bo- that boy loves his Kentucky. Wesley, yeah, Wesley Gaines, appreciate you, man. Look, you keep, you keep us entertained every single football. Dog, we had to wonder, like, he disappears after football season is over. And then he doesn't pop back up. We'd be like, dog, is he, did something happen? Like this year, we were like, did COVID get him? And then he pops back up. He said off season. There's no off season. <laughs> <laughs> we're not just a marketing campaign for a major. <laughs> oh, and if we were, what would it be for, Dr. Pepper? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not like the uh, ice cold Dr. Pepper guy. <laughs> it was at that time that they did not realize how wrong they were. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Games, man, he might be a Dr. Pepper guy. He might... <laughs> hey. It... Come out there in the season. <laughs> yes, sir. He might pop up. All right. We're going to do these last two. Uh, we're going to do these no, last hang on, two. Hang on. Oh, my bad. I think, uh, my bad. My bad. I thought you did already. I'm sorry. No. I'm going with, I'm going with Kentucky, though. I was just saying, like, it, this may – and, and uh, just have a feeling that the passing game may come out in this game. I mean, I know they love to run the rock and that kind of stuff Kentucky does, but I think the passing game may may uh, may come out in Robinson. You know, he's got uh, – uh, good bit of yards and good bit of reception. So I don't know. Um, I'm saying Kentucky 28 24. Okay. All right. Well, these next couple we're going to run through a uh, pretty rapid fire style here. Uh, not that we're in any particular rush, but uh, we need to go ahead and get these right because I got a good question in the comment section I want to get to, which ties into this. Uh, so the Sugar Bowl, number seven, Baylor versus number eight, Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Baylor, uh, like I said, Baylor, quite Baylor. The best team in the Big 12 this year. Uh, only, and I say that only because they beat Oklahoma and they beat Oklahoma State. Now, whether or not they're the absolute best team, who knows? But they are the Big 12 champion. Um, and, and so, um, and then you got Ole Miss with Matt Corral and that million dollar arm, and he's also running full. So um, I will say, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and give my two cents and I'll pass it to you guys. Baylor was able to shut down the Russian attack for both Oklahoma State and Kennedy Brooks at OU, and that's all right. I have to say about that. So that's where I'm giving the edge to Baylor, but I think it's going to be close, and I think it's going to be a shootout, um, and I think it's going to be one of those games that's going to be in the low 40s, I think like 46 to 42 or something like that, but I'm giving wow. the edge to Baylor. Woo-hoo. So wow. where are you where are you going, uh, Colin? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Baylor as well. Um, uh, just uh, let's go. I mean, it, it may be a little bit closer than what you're saying. Maybe, or sorry, a little bit lower scoring. I would say 35 to. I say 35, 32 would be like a, a field goal type situation. Hmm. Hmm. All right, Sean, what you what you got, sir? 
Yeah, no, I, I think this game hinges on two points. Um, number one, I think it's going to be uh, the uh, how how hurt or how healthy is Matt Corral. And if he is healthy, I think the offensive Ole Miss versus the defensive Baylor is going to play a huge factor. And whoever wins, that's going to win. I personally I, – I got to go with Ole Miss. I got to go with Ole Miss. I'm saying 27-24. Um, in this, I, I like Baylor, but I think Ole Miss and uh, Corral are going to find a way to get it done. Only reason I'm going to disagree with you on that is because if you remember when Ole Miss and Arkansas played each other, mm-hmm. that was a shootout. They scored what was it, 100 and something, 125 points. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Neither Ooh. team, neither team played any defense. So, it, well, I won't, I won't say they didn't play any defense. It's just the past defenses were not able to stop one another. And yeah. I'm not saying that Baylor has that stout a passing offense, but mm-hmm. Ole Miss has already proven that. The, the reason that they're winning these games is because they're just Matt Corral is just able to put up that many points. So, you know, if they can, if they can, if they can keep Matt Corral contained because he also is their leading rusher, I believe, if they can keep him contained and just and limit him to just using his arm, which I think they can do, that's where mm-hmm. I give the edge. So, um, let's see. Moving on to the next one, the Texas Bowl. Last but not least, this is K State versus LSU. And honestly, I don't know which way to go with this because K-State is K-State and LSU was Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And I think Max Johnson is in the transfer portal. I believe he's already gone. So I that's the only edge I would I'd give it to K-State just because of that edge. That's it. That's all I got. And uh, I think Coach Kelly's coaching. He may be able to find a way to rally the troops, but he's going to have to drop the accent. So coming to you first, Sean, what do you got? Uh, I'd s- you said Max Johnson is not playing. I don't out? believe he. I don't believe he is because I think he entered the transfer portal. Okay, well if he is not playing, then I'm gonna have to say KC 35 to 14. Uh, because I don't. Yeah, I don't know would. who. I don't know who's going to come in after Mac Johnson. Man, if Mac Johnson was playing, I'd be like, "Yo, it, this might be a shootout," and maybe I, I'd probably go LSU's direction. But I don't know who the backup is, and then I don't know who's coaching. I don't know anything right, right now. So, yeah. you know, I can't expect that they're going to be ready for this game. You know, maybe they yeah. will. Maybe they'll shock me. Hopefully, they do. But I don't know. I mean, you'd, you'd like to think for them, they they would like or they have the attitude they want to finish the season strong or whatever. But having those mm-hmm. kind of Things under the, I mean, like uh, you know, coaching and, and and their quarterback leaving. I'm going K State as well. I mean, it's yeah. it's big by three and a half. So I mean, you know, I mean, it'll be a low scoring game in my opinion, 28, 24 maybe. Yeah, this was this one is definitely not going to be a shootout of any kind unless Max is staying for the ball game. In which case, then we may have to revisit that. But that's what we've got. Uh, that that's what we got. That's the slate of ball games, SEC ball games coming up this week. Uh, We did have some cancellations and things like that due to COVID, which brings us to Nate's question, uh, which brings us to Nate's question. And now that I know how to do this and not block people's faces, uh, Nate's question is, do you think the bowl game cancellations will hurt in the long term? And uh, to answer your question, Nate, um, I'll go first. I, I don't. I don't think it hurt. I don't really I don't think it'll hurt the bowl games because the bowl games will figure out a way to make their money. I think the folks that organize these are probably gonna take a hit, especially the ones that had the ones that had to be canceled. Oh, trust and believe they're gonna take a hit. But I also know one thing if they're smart business, they've got business insurance on it. So I don't think they're gonna take a complete and total loss on these bowl yeah. games. I think they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna lose a little bit, but they're not gonna lose every penny they put into it. Um, long term, I don't know. I think the only reason that they're canceling this year just has to do more so with COVID than our, than with transfers mm-hmm. of graduated mm-hmm. players. Yeah, because they because basically everybody that has canceled so far has said we got X number of players hurt. We could still field a team, but now we got X number of players hurt, and we got these guys that have COVID, and that's going to leave us short. Right. So I don't think that's going to be a long term hurt. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as uh, he's got some other things, he said he thinks there needs to be some changes for next season, oh, like yeah. a deadline, like a deadline on the transfer portal, hmm. fi- finding a replacement for a bowl game or for a bowl game for a team that can't play. Um, 
Anybody else got any thoughts on this? Because I want to jump in on this if I, if if y'all don't. Well, I was going to bring up. Yeah, go I was going to bring up about the uh, you know the the bowl cancellations and that kind of stuff. I, the only thing, I mean, I kind of agree with Nate. I mean, there's, I mean, there has to be something, but I mean, it's going to take a little while to kind of build up something because uh, we haven't had COVID, you know, this kind of situation happen, you know, to have to deal with this kind of stuff. But my only thing is the new rules with the. Um, you know, the bowl, if you can't fill a team, you forfeit, right? I mean, like, what happens with, say, a Georgia and, you know, Georgia playing uh, Michigan and, you know, the top four, you know, top four teams? You know, I mean, if Alabama was not be able to fill a team, I mean, they, they forfeit against Cincinnati. I mean, like, how does that affect, I guess, everything? You know, I mean, I, mm-hmm. I don't know how to, how it would affect the players, the teams, the, the, the money, which is the big thing, the, the, you know, the sponsors and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. First time I've ever heard of you know something like this. Is there's no there's no gray areas like you forfeit, you're done. You know, you, and it goes to the next. Yeah, and this is this. Well, is- I think we should take. I think we should take a a page out of the NCAA uh, college basketball in the March Madness. You know, I think certain teams and look, COVID is a is a unique problem. Let's let's be very Absolutely. clear on that. You know, that's Absolutely. not something that's going to be around. That's why I don't think this is going to affect the long term. But I do right. think there that that there should be. And we talked about this before the show, Anthony. I think there should be um, kind of like you have like the 64 teams and you maybe you have like two or three extra teams that are on the out waiting that maybe it, just in case somebody else can't play that I can get in there. I think you should have a couple teams, especially in this type of situation, this type of scenario, which we know that there more often than not, there's going to be a situation where somebody, a team is going to be affected by COVID and God forbid they have to, the the whole team has to sit out because for whatever reason. So then there should be teams because there's already a list of who's in and who's out in the bowls. So then you go back to who are those guys that were on the bubble. And yes, you might get into some teams that are five and seven, unfortunately, but you get into those guys and you keep moving that way. Or you just tell the other team, Hey, look, they can't play, so sorry. It's gonna be, it's gonna stink. But again, this is a unique year with unique problems, so I, I don't think it's gonna be the same going forward. Yeah, I agree. And I uh, thought you mentioned there. You think any of this will be alleviated by a say an eight or a sixteen team playoff or what have you like that? I mean, how would that would it be the next team up type of situation? You know, I mean, having somebody say on standby, you know, if a team can't play, you know, how would that? How would that be? I mean, would that right. that work or no? In your opinion, well, see, that and that's what I think they're going to actually bring in the other team. That's what I think they're going to have teams on deck. If they have the 12, 16 team playoff, then you have teams on deck. Like, okay, this team can't go. Bring in who would be next, and then I think that's that's how they would play it. But again, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because this is un- uncharted waters. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. Now, now to answer to answer this particular aspect that you're talking about here, Nate. Um, I think that it, it just because of the fact that this is the first time we've ever experienced something like this. I mean, even with COVID being what it was last year, we I don't think we had any bowl cancellations. I think all the games that were scheduled, uh, all the games that were scheduled, all the postseason games were played. They had the national championship, even though Ohio State kind of skateboarded their way in backwards because they played seven games. But that's a different story for a different time. I'm going to talk about that. Um it's just it's hard to the reason it's so hard to find replacements now is that the teams that the teams that were not assigned games, which kind of which kind of dovetails into what Sean did. Sean said they those guys are like, OK, guys, season's over. Great season. Go home. Enjoy your families. Go home. Enjoy winter break. Blah, blah, blah. And those guys have been sitting at home for a week or two with no practice and nothing. And they've been around their families who may or may not be positive or whatever and 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 now because somebody drops out three days before a game that three days is not enough turnaround time to call up the alert roster get everybody back on campus get everybody tested get everybody proven negative and run through you know and run through uh practice and drills that i just think it was something that you know I, i i do think i see where you're going with that is that they need to come up with a contingency plan for that uh, we kind of addressed the thing about the bowl games and not having this many bowl games. Those aren't going away because as long as somebody's willing to get, because aren't all the bowl games on ESPN? I'm starting to know it looks that way until ESPN they get like and some of the other uh, adjoining channels. 
Yeah. Now, nah, all the games I'm looking at through for the rest of this week are all on ESPN, except for is Sun, the Sun Bowl is on CBS. Um, yeah, yeah, the adjoining channels. Uh, yeah, come January 1st, you got ABC gets in there, gets a little love, but it's an ABC. An ABC. 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 Yeah, and ABC and ESPN are in bed together. You know, that's a whole that's the whole Disney family of of uh, networks. So, right. but uh, as long as somebody's willing to go, hey, we'll give your network twenty five million dollars for a thirty second for to run our thirty second ad uh, four times during your three and a half hour broadcast. ESPN is not saying no. Um, I ran across a stat last year. I ran across a stat from last year when everything was threatening to go bye bye because of COVID. ESPN stood to lose almost eight hundred million dollars in revenue. Wow! Mm-hmm. Just and that was just ESPN. Mm-hmm. Like as a whole, all of the networks that were tied in together threatened to, uh, were, were were potentially facing losing one point two billion. Will they be? Yes, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, will they be one point two billion dollars? That mm-hmm. means that ESPN stood to lose the lion's share. And then, of course, we know football is king. And the revenue from football, case in point, Alabama brought in about $140 million to their athletic program last year by themselves. Mm-hmm. All of that money feeds all the other athletic programs. So if you don't take that money, then what do you do next year? Then you're caught. So next year, they don't take the money this year. Next year, you can't offer as many scholarships. Next mm-hmm. year, you have to cut some funding from another program, which generally will more than likely be one of the lower tier programs because – you know, Nick's got to get his money, and hell, LSU just promised Brian Kelly they were going to pay him ten million dollars a year. That he's getting his money's in a contract, so mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't see the bowl games going away. Um, I don't have an answer for that. Any, anybody? No, I, any yeah, there? actually, I do. Yeah, no, I do. They're definitely not going away, and they shouldn't go away. Um, look, bottom line is like there's a lot of these schools, and I mean, I've talked, I've. I've been on my soapbox all year about it. There's a lot of these schools that aren't going to get any kind of attention any anytime during the rest of the year. If you're a school that's a lower school in Michigan, competing with a Michigan State or uh, competing with a, a Michigan, if you're in a school that's in, in Georgia competing with University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, if you're in a school that's in Florida competing with Florida State, you're not going to get airtime until one of these bowl games. And that might be – you know, the first time your parents, your family, anybody, scouts, anybody gets to see you just that one shot. We look, we talked about the Jackson State um, versus South mm-hmm. Carolina State. All those Jackson, all those South Carolina State boys are like, look, this is it. Dion and all them, they, we know why the cameras came here, but this is our mm-hmm. opportunity to shine and make something for ourselves. These bowl games provide these guys an opportunity. And like we, we talked about this before the show, um, you know, guys, especially seniors. Speakers that this that they don't want they maybe they don't ever get to play football again. I told I told Anthony this. I still have memories, fresh memories of the last time I ever played football, and it, it stings. It stinks. I can go yeah. through the entire game. I can smell the grass. There's nothing like the going out of that tunnel from the concession stand. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. like going out of that tunnel and and having that cheer and everything. And that and me, I had it on a low scale. So you having that on a collegiate scale with big stadiums, going out of that tunnel with your guys, even if it's not all of them, even if it's not all your studs, going in to that just one more time, it, it, it's it's the world to a lot of these guys. And these bowls and this type of stuff, it, it's necessary. It's a part of the pageantry of college football because it lets you know you got a shot. You got a shot to do something, and this one opportunity – could be that one bit of attention that you need to then prolong your football career or just to say, hey, look, I did that. On that day, I was in, you know, the the Johnny Johnny Appleseed Bowl, and I made this great, you know what I mean? And I, I – Playing against Buck Apple, Tussle State. <laughs> I picked up the, we the, hung Apple, 52 the on Apple them. trophy. The Apple <laughs> trophy that I was able to eat after the game. Like this you – know, that was it. Yeah. That was it, you know. But, that, you know, that – it, it just means something for the players. It means something for the team. And it means something for those universities because you talked about it, Alabama getting the money that's funding all the rest of the program. These little schools getting that money, 
that money is is game changing sometimes oh, because that money can actually keep some of these schools and all you talked about how the other programs, the other sports get get you know the, it, it kind of saturates and filters down to them. That plays a huge role, especially in these smaller schools. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you know, I like I like I love to talk about. Uh, I love to show my Tigers of Savannah State a lot of love. Um, they have a, one of the premier. Lady women's basketball teams in the country. They're not on the same level with like UConn and uh, the Tennessees during the Pat Summit years, but they're one of the premier uh, programs in in women's basketball in the NCAA. Like they have earned a tournament berth, I think three out of the last six years or something like that. Wow. But the money from that is generated by the football program, which most of which comes from the boosters. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Tia and Tia and Tamara, their brother was playing football there, and the boosters dumped a whole bunch of money into the program that year because they had Taj Maori there, and um, I think it was Oklahoma State came to town and paid them some ungodly sum of money to run up a seventy to hang seventy points on them or whatever. Mm. That money paid for a whole bunch of Savannah State got a whole new arena for the basketball team. Yep, that that kind of stuff. So yeah. while it sucks that these small schools aren't getting that kind of, you know, if we can start getting more, and that's what the, one of the things about I love Dion doing what he's doing, because if you get the schools on on TV, then they get TV revenue, mm -hmm. and then they get eyes on them. Now, you know, if somebody wants a player, they will go get a player. But the TV right. revenue, I mean, <laughs> Shannon Sharp, because like Shannon Sharp said, he was thinking about transferring to, I think he said he was thinking about going to Ohio State or something like that after his freshman year, and he said, Coach David just looked at me and said, son, if they want you, they'll come find you. There you go. Yeah. So the revenue is very important. Uh, a couple of other points here. Nathan has he said, if a team or player pulls out hefty fine, I don't know. That's that's mm. that's that's a slippery slope you're, play, you're, you're, you're playing with because, I mean, COVID being what it is, COVID being what it is, that's a – absolutely legitimate reason for a team to pull out right now right. with COVID being what it is. I mean, and we know the injuries these guys go through a lot of them by the end of the season, especially the seven and five and eight and four teams, those guys are beat up. They're banged up. Um, they're trying to rehab them enough to get them in a bowl game. Cause at that point their season was over at week after week 12, then you got the conference uh, games in week 13. Then you got the army Navy game, which I think was last week. And then you you got you got almost two and a half weeks to rest and recoup. But if you got guys that are just like, coach, I just can't go. You got 10 guys injured. They can't play. And then you get 10 guys get COVID and they can't play. And all you got is X number of players. I mean, I don't know. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. And, and uh, I see where you're going with that, though, because, uh, you know, Sean, you and I talked about that earlier. Uh, Pickett and Walker not playing in the um whatever bowl that was and i know that was kind of the they were hanging that they were hanging that uh that ornament they were hanging the mercedes ben ornament on that one that was going to be the showdown and now those guys aren't playing and then last but not least there has to be a legitimate reason for why entering the transfer portal I again mean, another slippery slope go ahead uh, Col uh colin well no i mean we, we've kind of touched on that last week i believe all, all of us and uh you know I, I, I'm a full. I'm, I'm, I'm a full uh, proponent of a, a limit. How many times you can go? I mean, how many times? Mm -hmm. you can that pool? Um, I mean, it, I don't know what that limit should be. I mean, I, I'm not the one. I don't get paid the money, you know, to, to make those kinds of decisions. But I mean, there's got to be some kind of limit. I mean, you can't just bounce around from team to team to team and, and you know do it like you know LeBron it does <laughs> for NBA. Get, <laughs> right. You're the best team, you know, come in and try to build the best team to win, you know, a national championship. I mean, there's got to be something. Now, I understand there. Are different situations and and situations that players need to get out of. I completely understand that, but there does there has to be some kind of limitation. Like I said, I'm not. I don't know what that could, that, that would could potentially be, but I mean, there's got to be some kind of limit on that. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Um, the the one solution that has been thrown about that I'm actually not not too um angry at is roll it back to where you had to sit a season. Before right. you could play, that's good. like yeah. you like you 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 don't give up any eligibility, but you can't play this season. If you transfer, right. you're gonna sit. 
And I think that will, right. right. And that will deter a lot of guys that are just making this impulse decision because coach said something they didn't like. A lot of Rico's. Yeah. Rico's (laughs) time is now. Um, (laughs) Hey, any of you guys need a punter? No, I think we're good. I brought Dr. Pepper. Welcome to steak. Um, (laughs) God, I love that. I love, I love those commercials, man. I hate that there's not going to be any more until next like September. Um, I, I, I think I think that will det- <laughs> stop it. Don't you start. <laughs> don't you start. We don't just stop existing because football's over. <laughs> That's an interesting swing set you got there. Yeah, who, who made that? Oh, it's uh, Swedish. It's, it's Swedish. You should check out the neighbors across the street. They got a really suspicious looking antenna over there. Thanks for the tip. Anytime, <laughs> sheriff. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, how's that burn on your arm? Oh, Doc says I'll be out for the whole grilling season. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, back to what we're talking about. I think I think there's a lot of guys that are just getting upset because they're like, uh, you know, I think what I think I, I'm with Nate in that we need to limit the number of Tate Martells, the guys like Tate Martell or uh, Dewan Mathis who uh, transferred to us from somewhere, left us, went to Temple. Now he's transferring someplace else. You kind of want to limit those guys. But if you start saying, hey, look, you won't lose any eligibility at all if you transfer. But just know that if you go somewhere, you're going to have to sit. Like in the perfect case of point with Bo Nix going to Oregon, now you got this freshman kid behind him who uh, Cristobal probably said, hey, you'll get your shot to play. Now you got a new coach coming in who's going to want to eval everybody. And you got this kid coming from Auburn who's a senior who they will more than likely eval and more and maybe give him the starting job. It's like, so, you know what I mean? It, it, the domino effect that he'll transfer and the kid behind him will transfer because, like, well, what's to say that I'm going to stay here and I'm not going to get to my t- – you know, so I think yeah. if you make him sit. Yeah. Because you th- do you sincerely think that Bo Nix would leave Auburn if he knew that he was going to have to sit for another year? Mm. Or that Caleb would have left, uh, uh, not Caleb, that Spencer Rattler would have left uh, Oklahoma? Yeah. It's slippery slope, man. You're right. So it's a but bit that, of a slippery slope. Them sitting, the sitting, uh, them sitting, would that take away a year of eligibility? No. I, that's that's what I said the stipulation would be. You can okay, transfer. Okay. You can keep your eligibility, but you have to sit for a year. Because that's right. what it was uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. It used to be. Yeah, that's what you said. Uh, used to be. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Because when uh, what's it? Uh, uh, remember Justin Fields was trying to petition so that he could play immediately, and I think they granted it. But the year before, when Easton left to go to Washington, he had to sit. Yep. So, anyhow, uh, I think we have gone through just about everything we got here. Oh, before we move another further, this segment has been sponsored by Envision Social Media. Visit them today for all of your social media needs. They will empower, create, and sustain. They will help you. Uh, they will help you build and develop your social media presence. If that is what you are doing as part of your business, visit them today at envisions www.envisionsocialmedia.com. Thank you for being a segment sponsor here on this week in SEC football. Gentlemen, it's been one crazy weekend. It's been a holiday weekend. We had games that were supposed to be played that weren't played, and games that were played that some of us wish were not played, and games some games that got played that we were surprised how the ending went. I'm still surprised. Like I'm I'm expecting to wake up and it's gonna still be Sunday afternoon, and I'm on the couch with a chip with some cheese running down my hoodie. And uh and young Hiku misses the field goal. The Falcons lose. And the Detroit yeah. Lions win their fourth game of the season. Like I'm shocked. Yep. It's a little it's, playoff hunt. You guys are yeah, ahead of us. It's, it's like hey. Eddie Murphy. It's like Eddie Murphy said back in the day. Harold Washington is sitting in his office right now, going, "I really won." <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't say the rest, but you know what he's saying. But you know, so it's been a crazy week. Uh, actually, I take that back. Are we doing the thing on Friday? Because we uh, had some questions about whether or not we were going to do the pregame show, and I wanted to get that out now before we... that that day. Yeah, well, we could do that. Yeah, we're do- yeah we are doing it. That's, Colin, uh, you look, Colin, you look you, yeah. you look like we. Well, no, I'm like just trying to think about son. <laughs> he's like, man, he's like, I was playing. I was planning on pregaming. <laughs> My son's going to be here, so I mean, I got to lay down the law with him. I said, hey, look here. I'm gonna set you up in your bedroom and we you know leave that alone for a minute. <laughs> okay. 
So, uh, so I misspoke earlier. This is not our last year show of 2021. Our last show will take place this coming Friday. We're going to come on. We're going to give a little preview of what we think is going to happen in the uh, CFP. And uh, then we're going to log off and we're going to enjoy the games. And hopefully when we reconvene in 2021, uh, two thirds of us will be very exceptionally happy uh, that our team has won. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sean will be happy. Be. Sean will be happy that his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his Tar Heels have uh, pulled it off because uh, Dag, Dag, where you did like the, <laughs> you took that butt whipping early. He's like, okay, I got to get all this stuff off. Who Tar Heel Blue, Tar Heel Blue. Oh, oh, let's go. Got to go to a winner. Got to go to a winner. We we won the, we won the Natty like like two or three years ago. So I I I can attach myself to a winner. That's the only way I'm able to deal with Washington. I, I firmly believe that if you, I have no problem with you dying on your sword and being on your team, but you have to have another team. You have to have a team that's a winner because you have to taste some kind of joy. I don't understand those people that are like Bears fans and then crappy fans in the baseball and crappy fans. Like, I couldn't do that. I need a winner. I got North Carolina. That's my winner. Oh, with bro. that, Washington is just. Try being a Georgia fan, dude. I, I was gonna say you realize you preach it to the choir, right? I mean, <laughs> we we we've had to wait. It was it was in in Colin and I's lifetime. It was 15, 16 years between championships. Yeah, from the Dogs to the Braves, and then yeah. we haven't had another championship from the Braves to the Braves. Yeah. So we kind of we kind of had to sit in the back and go, "Yay, go Capitals!" Yeah, you go Nationals. That's not my team, but at least I'm rooting for somebody winning. Now, me, I'm I'm a Spurs fan, so I at least had that. Mm-hmm. I at least had that. So, but ah, yeah. it's rough being a Georgia I sports mean, fan, we, bro. We, we had that Super Bowl run where we snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, just, you know, yeah. we had that. That just didn't make no sense. That's the way it goes. That didn't make no sense. I was the one guy. I probably was one of maybe. Five percent of Atlanta fans that didn't destroy a TV. I was just sitting there looking at the TV like that was another one. All my friends yeah. text me at the time. Man, I was like, shut up! Don't I won't hear it? Don't want to hear it? Don't I turned my phone know. off. I turned my phone all the way off because I talked mad cash trash to all the Redskins fans. Because I think I think we played y'all that year and beat y'all, Sean. I think for yeah. what uh, the year we rent made the, the Falcons went to the Super Bowl during the season. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we did, and I talked mad cash trash, and I was like, y'all ain't gonna make it to the playoffs, and then we made it to the playoffs. And y'all ain't gonna make it to the conference championship. Then we got the conference championship. Y'all ain't going to the Super Bowl, and it's like, oh, we're going to the Super Bowl. So I walked yeah, around. I, Green look, Green, I saw him play Green Bay. I was like, yo, I was yeah. Falcons. I was Falcons gear all day, every day between the conference playoffs and the and the and the uh, the conference championship and the Super Bowl, oh, yeah. and then. uh didn't nobody say nothing. One of the supervisors was a Steelers fan. He said, he, he waited about two weeks. He said, uh, did you throw out all your Falcons gear? And like half, <laughs> half my coworkers just start cracking up laughing. I'm like, man, forget y'all. Forget y'all. Mm-hmm. I, read, I was like, Red, he going to cry in the car. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, this has been this week's edition of this week in the SE. Oh, uh, final word. Final word before we get out of here. Uh, uh, Colin, go ahead. Final word. What do you mean? Final word. You got anything you want to share with the crowd before we log on? No, man. I just I enjoy hanging out with you guys on the uh, podcast and stuff. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I'm I don't know. I'm kind of glad to see, or not glad, but I'm kind of sad to see the uh, the season come to an end. You know, I mean, it's mm-hmm. been a, a very interesting mm-hmm. season. I mean, teams have come out of nowhere and you know teams that have lost and should have lost and um i'm happy that we're in the you know the final you know we're in the playoffs and the georgia is and uh you know it's just uh yeah it's been a pleasure i mean honestly um i'm glad we got uh, the next what, friday and then uh hopefully we can find something else uh to do after football's done but <laughs> i know sean will be so, hey you know there's always gonna be college basketball march madness that i'm doing that show that's coming up so yeah yeah always always feel free to Join on with us on that stuff because I'm, oh, I'm yeah. going to keep going. You got a last word for us, Mr. Spencer? No, I echo his sentiment. I echo your sentiments, Colin, man. This is this is bittersweet. It's 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 tough covering college football and football in general because 
you're always all year you're anticipating the end of the year because you want to see, you know, everything you've been talking about. Is it going to come to fruition? Is this yeah. team going to win out? Is this team not going to make it? You know, who's going to be the Cinderella? And then the closer you get to it and then you get to these points when it's just like, well, that's it. It's just like it's just like Christmas. It's just, you know, I, exactly. I saw this this uh, cartoon with Garfield and he said Christmas is like a big sneeze. It's a huge buildup. Blah, blah, blah. And then <laughs> after that, all you're left with is just a mess. You know, yeah. you just got to sit there and clean it up. That, I mean, that's what it is. It's this huge buildup. We've been waiting for it. We've been talking about it. Who we think is going to get this far. And now we get it. We see all these bowl games. And then it's like, but you can't help but think, man. After the Final Four, after the New Year's Six, after the Natty, we got to wait till next year. Uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's it, 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 well, that's, that's when you had to start. Then you go, okay, pro football, let's, let's ride out the end of the pro football season. And then it's playoff time. And then it's the Super Bowl. And then now you got to wait for the combine. You know, mm-hmm. so basically, basically, it won't be that long wait. You'll we'll blink, and it'll pretty much be time for this for the spring games. So we'll have some yeah. stuff to talk about pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. you know, just to, my last word is um, twenty twenty one. We thought that twenty twenty was full of challenges, and uh, we had no idea what was around the corner. Everybody was like, "Please let twenty twenty one be a better year." Um, it has not been in terms of uh in terms of covid and things like that but we still face some challenges i know a lot, a, a lot of people are at the point where they're tired of being cooped up at home they don't get to get out they you know sean you talked about it you didn't get to see your family at thanksgiving janae did not get to see family at christmas because of covid it mm. uh it gets a little frustrating and um but uh you know you, you have to you have to persevere it it sucks but you know you have to find that you have to find some small reason, no matter how small it is, to get up and keep going every day. Now and I, we we say this jokingly, talking about the scripture, but the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to he that endureth. And you know those of you that know the word of scripture, you know how it is. So, um, I, I and and this has been a great outlet for me, gentlemen. This has, and I, I appreciate it. Um, to echo your sentiment from earlier, Sean, about the whole let's talk football family. Like you and I were just kind of passing acquaintances from the karaoke scene, and now we talk to each other three, four times a week. And through you, I've met Delilah. You know, I met Delilah and her very unique laugh. And uh and Anthony, you know, Anthony, Anthony, not to cut you off, but I'm saying, like, you and I've talked more, you know, doing this. And I really do appreciate you reaching out to me to do this because I never in my life would figure I'd be doing a podcast. But I, I mean, it, it is an outlet for myself as well, because I mean, I do find myself getting off, you know, logging off of work and saying, "Oh man, we gotta get, you know, get this podcast tonight." Da, 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 da. Give me something to look forward to since we all cooped up in the house yeah. because of the COVID stuff, and everything. Now look, you know now I look, mean? I'm I'm gonna take a little bit of credit for that because he told me Anthony said, "Man, I'm gonna try to reach out to my boy Colin." You know, he he really talked to me. I was like, "Yo." Let's get that thing started. Let's open well, the yeah. door and get that. Well, both of y'all, I'm I appreciate glad you it. made that move, Anthony. Absolutely. That was, hey, so, um, yeah, I. This has been a great outlet, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the Let's Talk Football family has become the most watched pod, the, the podcast I watch the most out of all the podcasts. Like, I'll catch y'all on Monday, or if I can't catch you on Monday, I'll catch the replay. I'll pop in and throw a little side comment and ab on watch the football weekly and then ab go this this yeah. fool, <laughs> you know, um or or, or or watch Will try not if Will would be trying to keep a straight face and then start cracking up, be like, what would I say? Like now I'm just watching Anthony in the comments. Um, you know, <laughs> the round table, uh uh catching Nate when I can, more than likely on a Friday or Saturday. This has been uh, this has been good for me. So it's given me, it's helped me refocus because I kind of was losing the focus with Zach Niff before you and I started talking, Sean. Because I was like, nobody's buying the shoes, nobody's buying the merch. Now I'm making all new merch. Like I said, I think I sold a couple of pairs of shoes today when I was in a dentist's office. The dentist was like, those are cool. Where'd you get those? And when I made them, he went, oh, for real? And it's like, where did you find those at? He was getting ready to write it down and pull out my little uh, touch, my little, bloop, my little business card. <laughs> And he's like, oh, that is so cool. I said, yeah. He's like, he's like, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to buy some as soon as it loads up. I was like, all right, cool. So I'm waiting for the email to come through. He might have forgot. I'm going to remind him when I drop my daughter off for her appointment. <laughs> right. in February. Yeah. But I remember yeah, the yeah. shoes you said you was going to get. And go right on his website, send an email straight to him and be like, 
No, hey, Doug, you only wore them. So I ordered you five pair. Did you say you went five pair? I ordered them for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's really, it's really been a great outlet, and uh, it's given me something, something to look forward to building, and it has helped me become better. Actually, I think at as a podcast host. Yeah. So, I you know, and I'll be a, hey, I'll be. Uh, I don't know if is our uh, our conversation if our conversation from earlier is still a go. I'll be on tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. With the with the cast and crew of the round table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um I appreciate you guys and I appreciate you know I appreciate you guys hanging in with me. Sean yeah. giving me the Sean giving me the pointers. It's like, yeah, you might want to pull back a little bit. You gave a whole dissertation. Just All make right, your point. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he he said he said he told me, he told me very politely, make your point, make your point and pass the mic. Just like jump rope, <laughs> man. Get in, get out. Right. <laughs> It's like this. Go. This ain't the Jodeci concert where KC KC singing a riff for thirty Ooh. minutes. Let, let the rest of them sing something. <laughs> yeah, right. So appreciate that. Uh, now, having yeah, said no, that, no, Anthony, I was going to say this though, but actually, I'm not. I mean, I, I've never been one to get in front of people and talk, you know, really that much. But this has given me, like I said, I'm, I'm being honest. When we we just got on, it's supposed to have been a dry run. Like I'm not lying. Andy said, oh, we're going live in five five seconds." I said, "Yo, what?" Yeah, <laughs> and it was cool. Like I was, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit, but then you know, after everything, kind of like, we started talking. Dude, man, I'm good. Man, whatever. The only thing I got problems hey. is looking at myself in that mirror, that that, that that screen right there, looking at myself. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing because I, I find myself looking down so much, and I'm like, "Oh wait, yeah. look up, look up, look that up." Off. Yeah. Look at you guys. But that's but what yeah, I mean. That's that's what the let's talk. That's the let's talk thing, man. Is is it's let's talk. It's exactly what it is. That's you just want the conversation. We do this stuff, I, and that's why I try to tell people we just do we just do stuff already. We're already doing this stuff. I you know yeah. Anthony, him and I talked on the phone for what an hour or so earlier, just about a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. It's just natural, normally doing it. So why not do it in front of people? We're gonna do yeah, some form, extra yeah. little. Right, doing a little extra research, a little back and forth, putting our ideas out there, man. That it's natural, man. And we, and, and, and truth be told, we need to talk. Everybody, we need to stop. Oh, being I, was, I, was by our phone. Simple, but I mean, if the world did that today, we'd be a lot better off. There you go. Right, right. It'll so be- let's let's if it starts with football, that's fine. But let's foster that. Let's foster that communication because that's what's neat. That's what's key. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, I think that's been the thing. Um, I, I, you know, I've heard several people say not, not to us specifically, but I've heard other people say, you know, starting a podcast is probably one of the best things that happened to me during this pandemic because it gave me something to do other than talking to my walls. Mm. You know, somebody, <laughs> so, no, seriously, Very people true. that, people that, that have, people that have, people that, people that, yeah, people that are, are high risk, you know, high risk, uh, uh high risk to have uh, really susceptible immune systems that live by themselves that work at home remotely and shop remotely they get their groceries and their food and everything brought to them and as they don't want to go out unless they absolutely have to and like being on a podcast is just giving me something to connect to and that you know and so yeah i i appreciate that 100 percent from you gentlemen as well yeah um so as pastor handy would say if all hearts and minds are clear ladies and gentlemen we want to thank you uh for joining us at the first church of the SEC football this week in SEC football today. We didn't take a collection today because the cash app is for for the first time and ever donations at an all time high. Uh, now we know that might drop off because some of y'all bought Christmas presents, but we know that April fifteenth is coming. You got a reprieve, like the student loan. You ain't got to pay us no tithe till April fifteenth, but we know when your W twos come, we gonna start looking for you after April fifteenth. Uh, otherwise you'll find your swipe card to the church membership zoom, uh, zoom call will be shut off. Uh, anyway, let me stop playing. Thank y'all so much for two <laughs> speaking <laughs> SBC football, uh, on behalf of myself, the brother from another Colin and Mr. Shout out King, Sean Spencer. We appreciate each and every one of you shouts out to those that came in and jumped in the comments tonight. Uh, our boy Ab from watching football weekly. Nate, uh, Kenneth Brown, uh, my man, uh, Big Dog, um, Big Dog Mario Foster. We will see you on Friday. And until then, be good to yourselves and be good to each other.
Holla. I think I just borrowed that from Jerry Springer. Anyway, we'll see y'all on Friday. <laughs> Peace. Peace out.